Fields meeting uh, Monday, April 22nd. We'll come to order. Please call the roll. Here. 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 Walker. Here. 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 Thank you. Next, uh, we have <coughs> the minutes for the April 8th meeting. Any corrections or additions? Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, starting on the first page of the minutes, I think they had you and I confused for some reason. Yes. You were present at the meeting, but they have me as um, opening the meeting and doing some things that you quite obviously did. Okay. Somebody may have to go back and re-listen to the tape and make the appropriate changes. Okay. Also further in, I noticed that, and it may not mean anything to him, but it is noted that building inspector Goodlow, I believe he's our building official, maybe he was an inspector in another life, but he's moved up. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we have a paragraph on page eight in the minutes. The run up to it is building inspector Goodlow then said request number three would be changing from a 1,736 square foot variance to a hundred square foot. The number should be 676 foot variance above the allowed 1,400 square foot. And further along said request number four would then be a 176 square foot variance instead of a 1236 square foot variance and I believe that is the case concerning the pole barn on Clarkson Road okay and that's all I had seen any other corrections or additions by the board okay please call the roll does she have to call the roll again move to approve well because we have a motion oh okay is there a second? Um, Walker? That's just a motion for the corrections. Yes. 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 Okay, now we need a motion for the minutes themselves. That was a correction to the motion during the minutes, and now correction. Now, I, I, I would make a motion to approve the minutes as they were amended. All support. All those in favor for signifying by, by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion passed unanimously. <coughs> Okay, next we have the uh, agenda review and approval. It's the agenda that was advertised. First case, ZBA Business AB 2019-06, Dustin Carey at 362 Shorewood Court. Mr. Carey was here and then he decided to uh, relook at his uh, uh, distances and see what he could do to get it a little farther away from the lot line. Is Mr. Carey here? Yes. Please approach. Okay, so it's my understanding that your request is now um, to be 30 inches from the lot line? Two and a half feet, yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, which would be 30.81% uh, coverage over the 25%, uh, so it would be a 6.81% addition variance. Um, questions by the board? Mr. Chair? Yes. Mr. You haven't made any changes yet, sir, pending whether or not this goes through? Yes, sir. Okay. And something I did see when I was over there that disturbed me a little bit, maybe you can help me with it. It was raining hard like it's been doing lately. Mm -hmm. And about halfway down your, your house line, there was a downspout that without apology was dumping water onto your neighbor's property. And I'm not certain that that's allowed. On, onto my neighbor's property, sir? Right. I don't believe, and Mr. Goodlow can help me with it, I don't believe you're supposed to redirect water to another property. That's correct. All right. And well, if you if you look at their parkway, that the whole issue is the grading of their parkway drives water into my property, which is why you would assume that hole right there. So I have I have a chimney, um, you know, that, that I'm now repaired, and now I have to backfill that area. Um, well, so that's as a, as a result of grading towards my property so I don't know if you're just focusing on my side or in not their side but um, both sides have grading water it looked temporary to me like it was something they were doing while they Correct. could do, until they could do something else yes, the only point I wanted to make is that is not something at least in my mind that can be allowed to continue so how you're going to handle it I don't pretend to know you're on a very narrow parcel as you said it slopes um, down the street in one direction and sharply towards the lake in the other one but it's That's just something you're going to have to figure. Okay, I correct it. It might be a matter of like inches or, you know, a foot, but I'll correct it. Thank you. So. Okay, 
the seat? Mm -hmm. No, I, I can't vote. Oh, that's right. Mike? Yeah. I was out there today, and uh, I see where Dan's coming from because it looks like they, they dug out near his foundation and they were waterproofing that or something. It looks like they're trying to divert the water away from where they had excavated it out. But generally, in those kind of cases, though, you want to get your neighbor's permission. It's, it's okay with them. Right. But uh, I see you had the string on there for your lot line. Yes, sir. On the side of the deck. And I see you had a the orange string. That's yes, your sir. lot line, right? Yes. Yes. You had a yellow string on the deck where you're cutting the string back. The deck. Um, I put a yellow rope there. I had some red flags there. They came no, off. Just, the day when I was out there, there was nails with yellow. Right, right. That's because the flags came off. So. That's your proposed how far back you're going to cut the deck back off the, your, yes, sir. Uh, the lot line? Yes, sir. Looked like it was about halfway between the, the stair steps there. Well, he's uh, proposing 30 inches. So. Yeah, yeah, because before it was three inches. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. So I would see if anybody else has anything to say right now. Okay. Don? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, is there anybody here to speak to this matter? Please come up, state your name and address. Um, if you just. If I may say so, sir, if we can keep this to a non Jerry Springer type show and, and I can't well, hear you. What do you if we can keep you this to the an, microphone, yeah. yeah. If we could keep this to like a non Jerry Springer type show and please focus on the variance and not, you know, demonization of my character or whatever road we're gonna go down. I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. Sir. Charles Peterson. Uh, here on behalf of my parents, 350 Shorewood. Okay. And uh, going back to what Mr. Flood saw today, that was new, uh, about 4 o'clock. Kennedy's survey was out doing their preliminary survey findings for my parents. So I don't believe Mr. Carey was aware that that's there currently. Um, and based on those PVC pipes and those dirt piles, based on that line, which is... Mr. Carey's survey company, Kennedy showed us where they had marked, and that's based on their line. Per, per that survey, the dirt piles and the PVC pipes would be on my parents' property. And I submitted a email with the Bing Map Street View, which was taken today, and you can see that there was a tree a fence and bushes all there along the side of the property where the deck now sits. What my parents are really looking for is for the deck to be taken back to its original spot which is on the other side of that retaining wall. I don't know how many feet that is within each variance but that's what they're requesting and based on the fact that there is now decking on the entire east side of the house even without the variance, there's more decking than there was before. So I don't, my family does not understand what the hardship is. Okay, now he's proposing, Mr. Carey's proposing to be 30 inches from the property, two and a half feet. Would that be on the other side of the wall? That it, you're I don't believe it would be. Oh, it's okay, I see it. I got it, yep. That would be like at the wall. Mm -hmm. okay. So you're you're saying that your family would like it beyond that? Yes, where the deck previously was, on the other side of the wall. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that speaks this matter? I want to understand what the gentleman has said. They wish the deck to be on the other side of that retaining wall. Right. Not to intrude over or up to the retaining wall. Yep. Okay. That's what I want. Yep, to that's what they're asking and uh okay, I got you. you can see the line. Yeah. Line here. Line kind of runs right over the middle of the retaining it wall. It does. It, that's where it's it on looks. An angle. Yeah, it's on an angle and that's where right. it looks good. Well it was excavated on the other side. Right. So right. when I went out there I just saw a tarp. Tarp was covering everything yeah. that yeah. wasn't deck. So I really couldn't see a whole lot. Because yeah. this was that wasn't there. Okay. Well, yeah, today was a good day to. to, to be yeah. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't go out there. Okay. Well, the request now is for. Um, let's 
let's see, it's supposed to be six feet and then it's two and a half feet. So was it be the request be four and a half feet? Uh, what would be the variance request? Yeah, 4.5. Huh? Four, four feet? Three. 30 inches, two and a half feet. Supposed to be six feet. Three and a half feet. Three and a half feet. So the variance would be for three and a half feet and 30.81% coverage from 25 would be 5.81%. The two requests from the petitioner. Mr. Carey, come on up. Is that correct? Uh, 5.81%. Um, that's not pertaining strictly to, to this portion of the debt. All right. Oh, so I just want to make make sure it's clear. We're not this we're not the increasing. Department. It says total lot coverage fifteen hundred ninety six point nine seven square feet, which is thirty point eight one percent. Yes, that's correct. for everything. That includes the new deck, the porch, the back deck, the garage, and the house. Okay, I just want to be clear because the other variance was, you know, for an addition we used that for building a deck. Well, this took in consideration the thirty inches off the lot line. Okay, and I just want to reiterate that. This is a pre-existing deck. You have pictures in there um, from 2000 um, where that deck was already in existence. It's, there's an aerial shot, um, you know, of it going. Aerial shots don't do much for me. Well, you can't really see the Indian, Indian, and the other gentleman mentioned bushes, which I can see. I can see, I can see right, this you, you, could, you could see a big white area that's all deck, I mean, all around the house. Um, I can see a so back deck. I can't see a side deck at all. So when, I, when I bought the house, that, that was used as access to the, the back door. Um, so without that portion of the deck, we wouldn't have access, not to mention it was pre-existing. So. Okay. Questions by the board? Any further? Mr. Chair. Yes. Sir, I've got in my notes that I made when I was on site, and it, it's kind of crude, but I've got knock south wing off deck problem solved. Um, what I think I was saying to myself is if you followed that cement down, you'd be losing a slice off your deck, but it would save you an awful lot of trouble. Is it, I mean, is that much deck a deal breaker in your mind? Because it would, should still allow you access around the side to the back where you're going to have a deck. What, what would allow me access? Not having a deck if, there if at all? If you took that piece off. And to use your own picture, I'm basically talking about a pie-shaped slice like this to follow that wall. You should still be able to use what's left to get around back here to the back of your house. Yeah, if you use the yellow line right there is where I'd be cutting to. I mean, that's almost to the end of the wall. I, I'm going to have to take it. I'm going to have to put posts on the other side of that wall, and that's where it's going to go to. So, I mean, I said two and a half feet, but really we're going, we're going on the other side of the wall. I mean, that's where my posts are going. So... Uh, I'm not so this line that's laying here that's, that's kind of difficult to see that would be the new deck line right that's right well probably yes that's what I'm asking for but it's probably even going to be you know just past that you know more to the house side the house? yeah and in your mind will that represent an expansion over what was there before no no it will not thank you okay yes Mike yeah, to me putting the deck currently three inches off the neighbor's line there's no deck in this township built that way. Yeah. We do we deal with fences that close. Right. For me to go out there and look at that deck, I gotta stay on the this gentleman's property and I need I need permission from him. They had to build a deck off of his property. Right. Which they intruded on his private property, his parents, which is not right. Okay. Now these lake lots, that's why we have these ordinances. Because these houses are jammed in there. And 10 feet is not unreasonable between the distance on the property lines. The fire department needs access to get in there. Emergency vehicles need access to get in there. And we look at this pretty seriously when we grant these variances. I don't think it's unreasonable for the neighbor next door who's being, his property is the one that's being encroached on. Right. And we're only asking for six feet here. Yeah. But for the neighbor said they have no problem if they keep that deck parallel with that other wall, with that wall there. I don't think right. that's an unreasonable request. Right. I, my weight on this is the neighbor that's being uh, intruded upon. Okay. That's where I'm coming from. Okay. Where, where would that be then? I don't know. 
Okay. This is a problem. We get up here and we have to start doing numbers. We ran into that case. We just had to correct the minutes. We try to do the numbers on the fly. Yeah. And then we get them messed up, and then we got to go back in again. Mr. Chair. But what would be the distance? Now, you're saying 30 inches. You show the line at the center of the, like on the wall, right? That's where this line goes, along right. the wall. Right, right. But you're saying that you would be behind the wall? My post, I have to put posts down. Because mm -hmm. the whole reason why we went on the other side of that wall is because I had to put posts in, right? And the, and yeah. and. Before we did this, there was a concrete slab underneath the deck, which the posts were screwed into. Well, I went and demoed the concrete slab, so now we can get posts in the ground. Well, I didn't have that option before I demoed. You see what I'm saying? And so we, this is in the middle of December. You can't, you can't demo concrete in December. That's not, so you know, my post would go on the other side of the wall. That's where the deck's gonna be. Okay, so we that makes sense because he's saying basically you can't, you know, the reason he put it on this side originally is because that's the only place he could put, put the post. post. Yeah, I understand so that. Okay, that so side. the post in the deck will be no closer than the north side of the wall. Correct. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So we can state it that way, you know, closer. And, and just just I like, to I like to have numbers myself. Personally. Yeah, well, that's we, it. Uh, we grant 30 variance. inches puts you on top of the wall. I don't know whether exactly. And when we so, grant the variance, the variance always goes with the land. Okay. So if we say three foot. Okay, that's, that's three fine. Three foot, that'll yeah, work. That's fine. Three foot, I'll put it on the other side of the wall. That, that's my main concern is that, so this neighbor here is. Yep. What they're asking for is get so it on three the other foot, side of that wall. So sir, he's they not the neighbor. A, there's right. six yards, so it'd be yeah. a three foot variance. And it'd be, the deck would be no closer than 36 inches from the property line. Okay. Now we're talking feet now. That's what he's asking for. Yep. yep. Three, now we're back three, to feet instead yep. of inches. Three foot instead of this, you know. Okay. He's allowed six, three foot, so yep. it's three foot variance. But I'd like to be clarified is on that those. No, is that part one or number one or number that's two? Part one. <laughs> that's part one. Now, one. to redo, I don't know. Black covers? Yeah. Um, Here we go again. I mean, you're only. That's why I hate when you have to do the numbers. Mm -hmm. Feet, square feet, right? Yeah. Is it what, a 10 by 6 inches? So, so say uh, 31%. Yeah, that's cover. what I would 31% coverage. So it would be a 6% uh, variance over the allowed 25 for coverage and a 3 foot variance from the allowed 6 foot. Between a 6 foot variance above the allowed 25. No, three foot. He's asking for three foot from the lot line. And the ordinance says six foot. So he's asking for a three foot variance from the six Down foot. here. Yeah, the first <laughs> lot 20. But I'm in lot coverage. Lot coverage is 31% instead of 30.87. That's the only change. Yep. All right, and this stays 5.81. And the three foot would put us on the other side of the wall. So the three foot is instead of the 42 inches on number one here? Number one. It'd be three foot instead of a 42 inch or three and a half foot side yard setback variance. Oh, wait a minute. When? No, you're on the wrong one. So you need to figure out this. Oh, that's right. So you got three. Yeah, you get your calculators out up here. You have a 7% variance. Right, okay. Yeah, instead of the 5.7, it'll be three foot from the required six foot. Number one. I don't have 5.7 or 5.7. 5.7. Hey, right. a 42 inch 3.5 foot side yard side bank variance is what I've got. He's good. This is the agenda. Today. Yeah, I don't. Double and triple check. Make sure See this? this 5.7 yeah. foot, so it'll be a 3 foot side yard set back from the 6 foot and a 31%. All right, so this is 3 foot no matter what I've got. Right, this is 3, three foot. foot. 3 foot variance. Yep. Okay. To build the deck. And it'll be 31% uh, for a 6% for a total of 31% coverage. 6% variance above the odd 25% yep. for 31. So yep. I had 6% here. That's correct. Okay. The building department could figure out the rest. <laughs> you want to try it? Are we, everybody? Uh, not not anybody? I, I, I'd like to uh, oh, you would have the out. gentleman come up here and. Sure. I like to be sure to. Hey, okay, with this variance, he's what he's here. requesting, it'll be on the other side of the wall. Yeah, as long as it's on the other side of the wall, the wall. my family That's will correct. be happy with that. Okay. 
Very good. Thank you. And we're not looking to be in any dispute with our neighborhood. Totally understand. Thank you. Thank for you very comment. much. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming in. Okay. Okay. Uh, just one statement before the motion, please, to Mr. Carey. Mm -hmm. um, I would. You're seeing that inches mean things, and I would, if I were you, be very careful to communicate that to your contractor, to let them know that they need to know. They're sure they know where they are before they do anything else that brings you back here. Okay, I guess I'm not understanding. You're not your own contractor, correct? No. Okay. I would let my contractor know what you've been through here in the event that you're successful, which I still don't know. Yes, sir. And let them make sure that they know that they have to adhere strictly to the measurements. There's no wiggle room at all. There's no leaning posts. There's no nothing. Right. Because the building department, I'm certain, will be on top of this with inspections on a regular basis until it's done. Oh, well, if you're talking as far as the post, I mean, I'm going to be the one that takes care of that. So okay. I'll make sure it's right. just a state code. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes. I'll try it. Everybody listen, please, because okay. I'm going to need help. In a matter of ZBA, case number AB 2019-06, Dustin Carey, 362 Shorewood Court. Sidwell 0903-405-0131. I would move, no, 0903-405-013. I would move the petitioner's request for variances from Zoning Ordinance 78, Article 27, Section 27.01, C1B, lot width to 50 to 54 feet. Uh, number one is a three-foot side yard setback variance from the required six-foot side yard setback to build a deck 30 inches from the side property three line. Foot, three foot. Three foot? Yes, 36 inches. All right, then there's going to be other problems too probably. We'll, we'll get it. A deck three feet from the side property line to the south. Article 6, Section 604, District R3. A 6% variance above the allowed 25% lot coverage for a total lot coverage of 31%. Be granted, because the petitioner in this case did demonstrate that the following standards for variances have been met in this case and set forth facts that do show he has practical difficulty in that he is working with an oddly shaped small lot. He is going to, based on downsizing from his previous request to this one, essentially going to be duplicating a pre-existing nonconformity that was there when he built the house. He is upgrading the deck. He has scaled it back. He will still be allowed to use it. Uh, neighbors have been here. The neighbor that is most intimately involved with anything that goes on stated that as long as he gets it to the north side of the retaining wall, which he stated that he will, they will be happy with it and it is due to a unique circumstance of the property again the shape the topography the exceptional and extraordinary circumstances have already been alluded to these houses are crammed in like sardines in a can on lots of all different shapes that predate any of us being alive um, variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of substantial property rights possessed by other properties in the same zone. You look in that area up and down, you see all types of things similar to this. The granting of the variance or modification will not materially be materially detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to property or improvements. Uh, as stated, there is one neighbor that is going to be closely impacted by this and if the variance goes through as stated, he has stated that they will um, be okay with it. Further, based on the following findings as a fact, there would not be an impair and adequate supply of light or air. Those houses are so close together, the air that gets through there now will continue to get through there. It will not unreasonably increase the congestion in the public street. It has nothing materially to do with the street. No danger of fire um, increase and it will not unreasonably diminish or impair established property values. It will not in any other respect impair public health, safety, comfort, morals, or welfare of the inhabitants. If anything, it will improve this gentleman's ability to enjoy his property. I'll support that for discussion. Any further discussion on that? I think it's a reasonable alternative. Please call the roll. Slide. Yes. Kosher No, she's 
I can't vote. I wasn't here oh, for I'm the sorry. first time. Yes. Walker? Yes. 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 Good luck, sir. Thank you, sir, for coming up. Well, I want to thank the neighbors for working together and doing it. And also, congratulations on your brand new baby. Okay, next we have AB 2019-11, Shane Burley at 515 Bellevue, 0911 303 Petitioner is requesting two variants from the Zoning Ordinance 78, Article uh, 6604, Zoned R3, a 5.64 rear yard setback variance from the acquired 10 foot rear yard setback variance to add a detached garage 4.36 foot from the rear property line, which is the street. A 4.3% lot coverage variance above the allowed 25% lot coverage for a total of 29.3%. Mr. Burley, is somebody, oh, Mr. Burley? I don't. Um, the question I have here is you've got a, you're supposed to be 10 foot. From your rear yard which is the street in this case correct i stood there and i looked and I, I don't know how anybody could back out you've got two curves you got a curve to one side you got a curve to the other side from the road how can anybody back out to see anything i mean they currently part i'm the architect representing the owners okay so you understand um they currently do use that uh concrete area as parking so yeah and i understand i'm talking about the neighbors i'm not talking about them the you're, gonna have a, you're gonna have a garage there now correct okay how, how, you got four four and a half feet how are you gonna see around the garage well if it, the piece of property is kind of interesting because we have a township line that bisects our property mm -hmm. there's a corner triangle that's kind of cut off so the variance you know the four feet is from not from the road it's from where the property line is it's with respect the to the township we still have the other parcel, that small triangle, that completes the uh, two parcels, if you will, that the owners currently own. So it is not four feet from the neighbor's property. You still have that 10 foot. If you look at our site plan, we are maintaining the 10 foot setback it, it, uh, with respect to the road. Okay, well, I, I looked at it and I'm trying to figure out how yeah i see the 10 foot how somebody you know on i guess to the north would be the one i would be worried about you got a curve coming around i just uh to me that'd be dangerous i i think myself i don't know i'm one vote uh lucy would you like to say i something? went there today okay and i get concerned with these houses that are close together as it is this isn't the first case before us that um We've had to deal with with variances in neighborhoods where the houses are maybe a few feet apart. That area, I'm with Mr. Yaros. I stood there for a good 10, 15 minutes trying to figure out the road is very narrow to begin with, right? Correct. Houses are very close together. I mean, the mailbox, I had to see from the mail, your address from the mailbox. So I'm a little concerned as to it's just such a small area and is it is it okay like fire wise for 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 fire people to get in and out of there well it's all down yeah you know. well but it's it's very tight yes i don't know dan you're you're the fireman what do you think well i i guess starting out in a different direction we have a piece of information i'm sure we'll get right into the record from one of the neighbors that they were concerned about being able to see past garage right well i walked over into their driveway and i stopped at the end of their row of arborvitae mm -hmm. i couldn't see past the arbor arborvitae to do any backing out anyway right so i'm thinking the trees are okay a garage isn't i certainly understand where where you folks are coming from but it's not going to materially impact that road that road is what it is true so and it's going to sit back from the houses to the point where I don't necessarily see um, fire EMS being an issue, but I was curious about, and, and the neighbors may be here and they may come up for public comment, but why the, the trees were able to be seen through, but the garage wouldn't be. Right. Technically, they could build. Well, because in my eyes, mm -hmm. one, you can see through between trees, but one's a wall. And, yeah. and the arborvitae, uh, I guess this thing's going to be 10 foot. My truck's over 20 foot long, mm -hmm. you know, so you got 10 foot sticking out in the road. Yeah. 
pulling out of a garage. So to me, there's one thing that we've always been really fairly tough on here is safety. That's true. And I would not want to see somebody. And I, I watched a car come around the curb, and I mean, this guy's doing 25 miles an hour. He's doing 35 miles an hour. Yes, go ahead, Mike. My number one issue on any of these setbacks is line of sight. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't care if it's a building, a sign, whatever. What I don't like about when I went to this property was I didn't see one thing staked out where their property line was. That's true. I had to take a guess. I know Mary Painter is real touchy on that. The other properties I went to today, everything was perfectly marked, strong, everything. So number one, that's a, in my book, that's a strike against them because if I can't go out and visually see where this is being done, then uh, I weigh that. Right. Also, the Arbor Vardis. Now, I know for a fact we've had some other situations like this where they're tight and people have put in carports. Mm -hmm. You got your cover, but you can see through them. Now, they, they most likely have to get a variance for that, too. Other people have come in here. I'm just trying to give an alternative. But I could not approve something like this because of line of sight, and that's a safety issue with me Okay. on, on this particular case. Okay. We do have one letter. It says, recently received a notice of public hearing uh, for 515 Bellevue. Petitioner is requesting two variances. We live next door and 511. Bellevue proposed 5.64 variance from the required 10-foot site, but would create a safety issue for us in backing out of our driveway onto Bellevue Road. The length of our primary vehicle is eight foot from the rear bumper to the driver's seat. Thus, in the garage was built. As per the petition, we would have to back our vehicle several feet into Bellevue before we'd be able to see around the garage. We don't feel this safety risk is acceptable and the mandatory 10-foot setback would provide us with sufficient clearance. Uh, that's from Frederick uh, Fiber and Net Fiber at 511 Bellevue Avenue. Okay, um, Don, in? Lucy? Sure. Just yeah. to echo what Mr. Flood said, I had not thought at all about carports, mm -hmm. but that would get their vehicles undercover, snow ice, that kind of stuff, and they can be seen through. I mean, it would definitely be a block there, you know, mm -hmm. but there's other blocks there. But that, does that mean we should entertain another one? Probably not. Carports would be, at least in my mind, a, a good solution. It would be an alternative. It would. Also, there's been other variances on this property already granted for the side uh, a deck and uh, I don't know, for some other stuff. And I mean, we're, we're starting to talk about serious coverage here on this little property. It's down and it's an interesting parcel. It it is. Because especially as an architect, it'll, to look down at everything, it looks pretty cool actually. But I mean, you know, this pretty interesting parcel in itself. But there has been other variances granted. Okay, let's see if there's anybody. Anybody here to speak to this matter? Yes, please come up, state your name and address please. Hi, I'm Frederick Fieber. I wrote the letter that you read. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, so, I, you know, basically we kind of put it out there, the safety concern that it would cause for us. And really, you know, I think it's the case, like even with any standard um, full-size truck you're with an eight-foot bed, if you got anything less than eight foot, you know, to be able to see around, you're going to have to back out your vehicle partially into the road um, before you can see. So it creates a, a serious safety issue. Um, with respect to the Arbor Vitae, uh, they are there. Actually, f funny, my wife's been kind of getting on me that she'd like to take them down. Uh, they haven't really been a problem. They're sparse enough that you can see through them. And, you know, if, it, if we were challenged on it, I would have no problem with taking them out. Um, but not for your own sake, for your own safety, you know, it might not be a bad idea. Yeah. Um, actually, some of them are even starting to die out a bit. So, um, you know, it's, it, it's probably... <laughs> making a, the decision for us but at any route the other thing is um, the road is kind of angled there too so it wasn't clear as to whether the proposed garage I assume it would be angled and that might actually make it even harder to to see you know if it was anything less than the standard 10-foot setback so um, not opposed to them building a garage but definitely would like them to keep it to code okay thank you very much anybody else Okay, board members, questions for the 
Fisher, any further questions? Or? Mr. Chair, I, yes. I mean, I, even talking about a carport without it being staked out, I, <laughs> I, know, I don't know where it is. Yeah, right. And, and, it, and I would find it difficult to entertain, even if the petitioner were to, to amend his request to that today, without knowing where it was going to be. Yeah, I, I personally think that, uh, you know, he's the architect. So is the architect here? Come on up, please. I don't think he can make the decision whether to change it to a, a carport or not. I don't think that's within yeah. what you were the saying. The property, uh, just to clarify, the property was painted in terms of where we were looking for the garage outline. I'm not sure which day you showed up. I know the owners did it probably Wednesday or Thursday of last week, which, you know, is I was too short within your week dots. time. Correct. I mean, they were little pink dots. So. If I hadn't stepped on one, I don't think <laughs> I'd have known what they were. I was there last week. And there last week. I bet the rain washed them off. <laughs> yeah. I was there today, and it was, there was nothing. It was, it was gone? Mm -hmm. I mean, the owners are open to the idea of a carport as well. So uh, that is something that, you know, depending on the outcome of today, I'd be willing to amend if needed. To put a carport in in the same location? Could we postpone and uh, then have come back with the different drawings and mark it out there? And yeah, we could do that. I mean... It's going to be different numbers, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, depending on what the owners wanted for a carport. You know. Right. Um, would postponing it until you can clarify exactly what they want? what the request is or do you know what the exact request is well it's a, a two car i mean i would do a two car carport as well i can get that in the, within the same footprint um if it's something that you you know you want an elevation or kind of an idea of what it looks like on the site you know i'd be happy to provide that um yeah you know it's up to the board what do you want to do what's the practical difficulty the practical difficulty stems from a couple things. Um, one is the obviously the small site. Also, I mean, one of the variances that we're asking for is the ten, is the setback variance, but that's due to the township line running through the property that was not self-imposed. Um, lot coverage is also always an, a concern. Um, we have included a portion of the boathouse that is on our property. We've included the hardscape walk the deck that continues from in order to access the lake from the front of the house all the way to the back um we are asking for a you know the, the what was it 4.3 i believe in terms of size three percent correct that's correct or the allowed 25. now part of that i mean if you uh, could factor in the triangle parcel which i know is not under the jurisdiction of the township but it is property that we believe would contribute towards the amount of buildable area. Question for the building official, <laughs> not inspector. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Goodlow, uh, do you know for a fact that if it was a carport, these numbers would be exactly the same or they wouldn't no, be No, no, the carports typically vary in size. The whole different ball game, right? Yeah, I believe okay. so, yeah. And I agree with Mr. Walker, I, I wanna see a fact where these things going <coughs> so I can look at it and get my sight line set up plus the neighbors can look at it that way exactly so, so it gives everybody a chance to overlook it to me you got two alternatives either take a vote exactly how this is right now or request a postponement and, and bring it back now if he would he have to not have to repost again for this because well, not if we do it on um, see that was one of the questions I was gonna ask the attorney because it's not a garage oh, yeah. and it's not really considered an accessory structure I believe at this point because it's a carport it might come into a little bit different of a play. Would it have to be advertised as such? It sounds like it would be. I haven't really looked at it, but it sounds like it would be. <laughs> yeah, basically it's a basically solid garage and yeah. now an it's alternative would be standard. a carport. Right. Yeah, and our ordinance is a little different on carports, I do believe, so okay. rather than a garage. No different? Little different, I Little think. different, I yeah. I do believe. I'm not 100% sure. That's why I wouldn't feel yeah, Technically, it wouldn't be a postponement then. No. no. It'd be a reapplication. Right. Two different animals. Yeah, so we have to actually take a, a vote on the motion as it stands. I mean, how it's uh, written yeah. up. Mm -hmm. Right now, right? Right now, right. Yep. Either, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, try. <laughs> okay. Do we have a? Do we have a motion? Mr. Chair, will our motion somehow impact if they come back for a carport? 
Yeah. Well, it wasn't in my mind, but you know, I'm one yeah, of But yeah. I mean, is, are we setting some? What are we going to say in the motion? And would they have to worry about how the car carport would be built around whatever? I wouldn't mention anything in the motion about the carport. I would just mention no, no, but, that but this turned down. For, for what reason? Site business. Okay. That's what would be in my eyes. Right. I wouldn't vote for this because of the the site distance and the safety factor. All right, and then, then I guess then if there was a carport sure. presented, it would later, be presented different. Be a different. That's right. Okay. In my eyes, that's I didn't what want to looked. penalize the petitioner by doing something. Yeah. No. Right. Well, limiting him to come back. No. The, the, that uh, there would be a fee. Not for me. Not for you, but the petitioner no. would have to pay for another application. And, and we can't do anything about the fees. That's up to the township board right. to do, do any fee stuff. Right. I, I don't know what the applicant wants to do. <laughs> what would you like to do? I mean, I guess you could withdraw it. But That's the last one, too. Can yeah. you withdraw? Yeah, I mean, he could withdraw. I don't see that the fact that he's turned down for a garage is going to make much of a difference to this board as it relates to a carport. But you could withdraw, and you're still going to have the same process after tonight. You have to refile asking for a carport. And if I if I choose not to withdraw, then then there'll be a decision we'll is binding motion tonight. To yeah. With regards to the garage aspect, that's correct. Yeah. Um, and if I do withdraw, it would be the whole process over again in terms of thirty right. day notice. That's right. And application fee. Correct. Right. The carport's going to require a new process no matter what, whether you withdraw or not. And then the other option is if 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 it gets denied, it's going to be the same as a withdrawal. Right. Yeah. I mean, he has if appeal it rights. If it yeah. went that way. Yeah. He has appeal rights to the circuit court oh, if it's you denied. Oh, right. Yeah. Forgot about that. By withdrawing, he's given those up. That's up to him. That's a good point. You do have. Yeah, what would you like to do? I, I think we should proceed. Okay. We'll okay. proceed with the way it is. I'll make, make a motion. Way. Okay. In the matter of ZBA case number AB 2019-11, Shane Burley, 515 Bellevue, 0911303004. I would move that the petitioner's request for variances from ordinance number 78, article 6, section 604, zoned R3, number 1, 5.6 foot, 5.64 feet rear yard street setback variance from the required. 10 foot rear yard setback to add a detached garage 4.36 feet from the rear property line the street number two a 4.3 lot coverage variance from the allowed 25 percent maximum lot coverage for a total lot coverage of 29.3 percent be denied because the petitioner did not demonstrate the following standards Four variants have been met in this case that they set forth facts which show that in this case, number one, the petitioner does not show practical difficulty. That's my opinion. I don't think that um, the small site and, and all that is practical difficulty. The following are not exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or condition to be to the property involved that do not apply generally to other properties in the same district and zone. The street is very narrow over there. The houses are tight. It's a tight squeeze. Um, number three, the variance is not necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of substantial property right possessed by other properties in the same zone or vicinity based on the following facts. Um, I don't believe this is necessary for any enjoyment um, other than maybe putting cars in there. But the granting of this variance or modification will be materially detrimental to the public welfare or materially injurious to the property or to improvements in such zone or district in which the property is located because the following findings of fact um, because number the, the most important thing in my mind is the site distance um, and the and the small space further based on the following finding of facts the granting of this variance would impair an adequate supply of light or air to adjacent uh, adjacent property um, again um, 
It's it's the sight distance. The the arborvitaes are there now, so all of that has um, something to do with this. Unreasonably inc increase the congestion to public streets due to the fact that this garage would be too close to the street. Um, I'm, I don't know whether it would endanger fire or endanger public safety due to um, the garage being so close to the street. Unreasonably diminish or impair established property values within the, sound, within the surrounding area. Um, due to the garage, the two car garage is number one a problem for me and then again being too close to the street or in any other respect impair the public health, safety, comfort, morals, or welfare of the inhabitants of the township. Um, again, it's the same thing. It's just too, uh, too much of a tight squeeze. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. I'll support if we can, if the uh, motion maker will agree to clarify it a bit. By sight, you mentioned several times sight lines. I know what she meant. Um, you're talking about people's ability to see down the street to safely enter the road. Okay. It would be the neighbor um, immediately to the north, as well as the petitioner themselves, if this building was built, would actually have to physically back into the road before they right. could check to see if anything was coming. Yes, thank you. Okay, any further right. discussion? Please call the roll. Cheryl? Yes. Walker? Yes. What? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming in, and you can take our information back to the owners. Okay. Next, we have uh, AB 2019-12, Andrew Garcia at 890 Buckhorn Drive, 0911-454-007. Petitioner is requesting one variance from Ordinance 78. Section 604, Zoned R3. A 6.8 foot side yard setback variance on the south side from the required 10 foot side yard setback variance to build a deck 3.2 feet from the south property line. Uh, Mr. Garcia. Maybe you can explain a little to us why yeah. you want to do what you were doing. Um, well, I mean, when we first bought the house, there was no backyard, so I had to really compromise. So, uh, trying to give a little bit more livable space on the outs on the out outer part of the house just to enjoy the uh the lakefront view and uh just to have some place to spend some time outside okay and the reason you can't build it on the one side is because there's a driveway easement there is that correct what was that again is that next to your house the driveway easement uh, the, dri the, the driveway side. is on uh, the north side of the house, so okay. we're proposing off the south end of the house. Got it. And from the south end of the house, from the, uh, our south south part of the uh, property line to the north part of the property line of the neighbor behind us, it's 10 feet 9 inches. So okay. they well, stay we, have, we have three letters, uh, one from William Wisher. Uh, here on House LLC, inform you that I am in favor of the variance for Andrew Garcia at 890 Buckhorn Drive. And uh, he said 915 Buckhorn. And then we have, uh, let's see, I think that's it from 915. So we have one person in favor. Is there anybody here to speak to this matter? Okay, one per oh, we do have one person here. Come on up. We'll hear what you have to say before we throw some questions out. Yeah, I'm. Uh, John Cleland host. I'm at 895 Buckhorn. Okay. I, I did submit a letter. You don't have it? I got it right here. Oh, you have it? I okay, have there it. we go. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, looked at this and it, it looks pretty reasonable. It doesn't seem to impede anything. Okay. Uh, seems to me to be a reasonable request. I, that's pretty much what I said in the letter. Okay. Well, thank you so much for showing up tonight. Mm -hmm. Since I forgot it. So Mr. Mr. Chairman, yeah. so you, what? I said, should we read his re letter into the yeah. record? Yeah, I want to yeah. read that, and then also I'd like a, a couple comments. Okay, and I'll we'll read just read letter this letter in. Uh, Thank you. Regarding AB, this is date stamped April 17th of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. Dr. John Cleveland Host. He lives at 895 Buckhorn, Lake Orion, Michigan, 48362. Zoning Board of, I'd like to uh, voice my support for the requested zoning variance of 6.8 feet. 
Andrew Garcia is a responsible neighbor and an asset to our community. His hope to build a modest deck is both reasonable and fair. The small deck would lease ample distance to the neighboring properties, increase the utilization and value of our neighborhood and Lake Orion community. This is a situation where everyone benefits from allowing Andrew to have a modest deck on his house. Feel free to come back. Sincerely, Dr. Hope. Okay. Good luck. Uh, yeah, very nice letter. I went out there and at the, is that a brand new house? Yeah. That's very nice. <coughs> yeah. It, it really has the value to the neighborhood. And I yeah, mean, it sticks out a little bit, but. Well, that's okay. <laughs> you run on a kind of a corner there. Yeah, it's, it's a kind of obscure uh, yeah. parcel so shape. Your, uh, I see your driveway Thanks. is adjacent to the easement to the house immediately behind you. Yeah, so uh, the, the neighbor's uh, driveway is actually technically on our property line. So the new driveway that's got the curvature to it, that's our, our driveway. And that's who's, uh, your back deck will be going against his front. Correct. His yep. in front of her, car. in front of her lot, yes, correct. But I noticed what I liked about it was that there's plenty of room between your deck and the property line of those Arbor Vardis yep. for the fire department or anybody can get around there easy. Yeah, so I, I made it. In a building, we're yeah. just talking a deck. Yeah, yeah, so I just made it sure. I mean, I, I work in healthcare, so even if like somebody had to get by through like, a wheelchair or something like yep. that, I wanted to allow at least enough so access to that, get through. That, that, that area in there, so you're not, you know, yep. switched in. Mm -hmm. yep. That's all I got. Okay, so, and also it's a double fronted lot, so yep. it's a kind of yep. a, you know, triangle shape with the end cut off. Right, I went by there today and I liked how you staked it out. There was, it's very nice. That's what I like to see. Thank you. Okay, is, is your yeah. practical difficulty, uh, what is your practical difficulty wanting to build the deck? Uh, the fact that we probably can't feasibly make a nine inch deck within saying within the 10 foot parameters. You got a door <laughs> wall back there that you want to. Yeah. We have a glass sliding door that we want to actually be able to utilize. It's difficult. You can't use a sliding door right now without it. Yeah. We can, we can jump down under the ground right now, okay. but that's about it. <laughs> okay. I wasn't trying to lead a witness on or nothing here. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you did a good job. Well, my attorney's yeah. over there smiling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Any further discussion? Yes. Just one question, Mr. Chair. What's the distance from your sliding door to your back property line? Uh, 10 feet, 9 inches. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Not a lot of room. No, no, not at all. Yeah, so we can make it work. We'd have to shimmy across. So. Okay, great. Okay. Anybody want to make a motion? Everybody's looking at everybody. Right. Mike, you going to jump on us? Let me get... Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. In the matter of ZBA case number AB 201912, Andrew Garcia, 890 Buckhorn Drive, 09114540007, I would move that the petitioner's request for a variance for a, var a variance from zoning ordinance number 78, Article 6, Section 604, Zoned R3, a 6.8 foot side yard setback variance on the south side from the required 10 foot side yard setback to add a deck 3.2 feet from the side property line south be granted because the petitioner did demonstrate that the following standards for variances have been met in this case and that they set forth facts which show that in this case the petitioner does show uh, practical difficulty thanks to some some help uh, due to the unique characteristics of the property in that it's a two 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 front sided property and there is a driveway on the on the other side and there's the door wall that uh, there's a droppage from the door wall to the to the to the to the to the earth and the they are not related to the general conditions in the area of the property and the following are exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions applicable to the property that do not apply generally to the other properties because of the shape of the property and uh, it's a uh, uh, two front, front, two fronts. Double front. Thank you. Uh, further, that the granting of this variance will not materially be detrimental to the public welfare or materially injure, injurious to the, to the property. In addition, there were support from two neighbors uh, and there was no opposition from any neighbors. The further that there there's no in increase in danger of the fire or in danger of the public safety or in any other respect to impair the public health, safety, comfort, or morals of the inhabitants of the township. Therefore, I would ask that this petitioner's request be granted. I'll support that. Okay. Any other discussion? Ms. Bellarone. John? Yes. Walker? Yes. Wood? Yes. Pleasure, yes. Charles. Yes. Good luck, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thanks, you. neighbors, for coming down supporting you.
Okay, next we have AB 9901-219, Bob Warren Trucking, Inc., Lot 28 of Highland Farms, Parcel 0932-400-024, Lot 29 of Highland Farms, Parcel 0932-400-022, Lot 30 of Highland Farms, Parcel number 0932-400-021, and a 7.5 acre parcel 0932-400-058. Petitioner has requested renewal of Ordinance 99 permit for sand and gravel, earth mining and filling and excavating. Somebody representing? He didn't make it. He didn't make it? Okay. Really? Holy moly. Okay, well, I'm still going to go with what information we have from our engineers on okay. this. Okay, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I will uh, just kind of summarize our, our letter of April 8th. I won't go through it in excruciating detail, but if you yeah. do have any questions uh, on it, feel free to ask. Uh, I'm happy to answer. Um, the application did include a, um, or I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, the topographic survey is already on file, uh, dated uh, June 16th of 2016. Um, we also noted that this uh, property is also under uh, um, site plan application for residential development, currently under review with the township. The current site conditions were pretty similar to our findings of last year. There's currently no mining activity taking place on the site. However, the application does state that there is a possibility for mining. Um, there is an existing retention pond on the south side of the site. Uh, the pond acts to re uh, retain a portion of the stormwater runoff. Uh, and I, it's our understanding it's used during uh, hauling and crushing operations uh, for dust control. Uh, it appears in, at some time in the past the applicant likely pumped the, uh, the pond down towards Brown Road, causing some erosion and whatnot, and just uh, remind the applicant that the Prior to doing so, they need to obtain a permit from the road commission. Um, overall, our you know it's our opinion that the current application and materials uh, submitted are in substantial compliance with uh, Ordinance 99, and we had a, a handful of uh, concluding comments for the applicant to address. Okay. Thank you. Well, well, one of the things we did see, me and Mark, in fact, uh, drove that on the site to review was the uh, erosion down by Brown Road from the pumping that was going on, um, which is, you know, something we really need to be onto because that has to be cleaned up off the road and creates a hazard. So, um, board members, what would you like to do without the petitioner here? One question. Yes. Were you able to physically access that site? I to was To go not. into the building? Yes. You know, in the back? No, the gates were not open to the to us. Yes. We had to turn off at the trailer. The trailer that there was an outhouse to, and I don't know what they yeah, were doing that, there. And yeah, we saw the trailer. And and you couldn't get any further either? Um, you mean into the site? No. Right. No, the gate wasn't open. Because normally in past years, we've been able to access the site and look around and, and see things from that side. Right. Um, that with no representation here tonight puts me kind of back on my heels as far as being able to move one way or the other. Um, I would like to ask Dan Kelly if, since we weren't able to see anything, I mean, the gate was locked, yeah. are we even in a position to vote on this? I'm just curious because... <clears throat> well, I'm not sure if the engineers were able to access it or, or to make, I mean, the fact that the applicant isn't here or even the fact that you haven't been able to see something should only affect you if if in fact that affects your decision so um, yes it's legitimate to deny it on the grounds that you didn't have access to the property yeah, we weren't able to physically walk on the property but <clears throat> there is a chain link fence that that allows you, you to see through see through and, and as, as I stated the, the conditions that we saw were you know pretty much the same as we saw last year so uh, having no reason to get access I, I didn't, didn't foresee it as an issue but I certainly understand the concerns well one of the issues was and I don't know if it's really an issue for this is the fact that it's somebody living in the trailer you know it's a trailer there at a 
I'd like to, but that really, that's up to you people whether you want to pursue on that, I guess. And you could actually see that entire property if you went up the hill, because you could look through the whole thing. Well, again, it's stated that it's not really any different in there. He's not mining, obviously. You know, we could see that. There's no big stockpiles. We could see that. I didn't see any oil laying around the ground. And I mean, I don't know how much. Plus, he owns the rest that the crusher's on, too. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, it's all part of the parcel. Uh, I don't know. But yeah. uh, regardless, uh, if the permit is renewed, they have to abide by all the conditions that are st stipulated in the motion and follow the same guidelines with the bond and the insurance and all the concerns addressed here by OHM. That's correct. Or, the, or if those conditions aren't met, our code enforcement has authority to revoke the license. Uh, that's true. So that's always well, any of these. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's always an option. Maybe I'm just old school with this. But I like it better when there's an applicant standing there One telling, uh, speaking on the record, stating that they understand all of this and intend to abide by it. Right. Well, you know, again, I say that, you know, the big thing for me was pumping water on down to the road. Correct. You know, if there's somebody here I could talk to, we can explain what <laughs> we do want to see or don't want to see, which makes it uh, a little tougher. And we can't even... Um, postpone because there's nobody here to make the request so we have to deal with what we have yes do we have the option to postpone this ourselves without yes, without the applicant uh, mm -hmm. yes yeah uh, well come on Britt, just give us your name and your <laughs> Pete Granzo Pontiac Crest Cement I mean as far as that we haven't been pumping anything on the road or uh, that's just wash out from the rain that's been okay then we need to intercede on that <laughs> eliminate the washout somehow you know okay well i mean because like it's the, washing out to brown road we saw I mean, we've been keeping it fairly clean though haven't you i mean well that day it wasn't all know, right so but that's one it was raining that day. well yeah i mean in the spring it's pretty tough to keep it <coughs> like that, but okay but you don't speak for no, i can't speak for jack right I, yeah, I, I was just looking at bob's application and he doesn't have anybody designated here to speak for him no Okay, thanks for yeah, yep. letting us know. Well, okay, well, what does the board want to do? I were to entertain a motion to, uh, due to the applicant not being present tonight, to answer our questions on this. And, uh, and also, I'll say access to, his prop, to, the, to the site. Uh, at least I'd like to see the, uh, our engineer and our code enforcement have access to the site. I make the motion to postpone the. Uh, let me get specific. the legal beagle stuff out here. Uh, AB 9901-2019, Bob Warren Trucking, Inc., Lot 28 of Highland Farms, parcel number 0932-400-024, Lot 29 of Highland Farms, parcel 0932-400-022, Lot 30 of Highland Farms, parcel 0932-400-021, and a 7.5-acre parcel, Parcel lot number 0932400058 be postponed until May 13th. Okay. Uh, support? I'll support. Any further discussion for the board? Does anybody like to speak to this matter before we vote? Yes. Yes, so come on up. This is the, uh, my name is Jim Swash. I live on Judah Road. Is this the lots on Judah Road? No, this is no. the lot on Brown Road. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, please call the roll. <coughs> Pardon me. Yes. Walker? Yes. Durham? Yes. Blood? Yes. Yarrow? Yes. Okay, next we'll go to uh, AB 9902-219, Dan's Excavating at 2985 Judah Road, north 535 feet of lot 11 of Mount Judah Farms, parcel 0932-400-056, lot 11, except uh, the north 530 feet of Mount Judah Road, of Mount Judah Farms, I'm sorry, parcel 0932-400-057, lot 12, and the southerly 588 foot of lots 13 and 14 of Mount Judah Farms, parcel 0932-400-055, and 3011 Judah Road, lots 13 and 14, ex excluding the southerly 
588 foot of Mark Judah Farms, parcel 0932 400 063. The petition is requesting renewal of Ordinance 99 permit of sand and gravel mining, earth excavating, and filling and balancing. State your name, please, for the record. Good evening. Uh, Brett Baker with Dan's Excavating. Okay, Brett. Um, then want to call on OHM here to give us the report. Um, sure. <clears throat> Again, I'll uh, just do a quick summary of our letter of, of April 8th. Um, as you noted, uh, the application included a new mining plan dated January 22nd of 2019. Um, the applicant is continuing to make progress with filling in the, uh, the pit to the south. <clears throat> um, at the time of our, our site visit, a small section of the perimeter fence um, in the northeast corner was uh, removed due to uh, current operations. But we understand the section of the fence is going to be relocated further inside of the site as noted on the survey once that work's completed. Uh, in, in general, the, the, the new mining plan includes fill from the uh, near the top of the gas main easement down to roughly uh, midway to Judah Road at a maximum slope uh, recommended of one on four. Um, in addition, the plan includes the creation of an on-site retention pond for stormwater management near the northern end of the site. This pond is necessary since the existing pit towards the south is nearly filled in. Uh, the proposed grading down from the gas main easement has yet to be completed. Uh, and we also noted that approximately the easterly one-third of the retention pond has already been constructed. Um, in uh, overall, it was our opinion that the application and uh, the materials as submitted are in compliance with the Township Ordinance 99. We did have a, a few app, uh, comments in our conclusion for the applicant to address. Okay. And the conclusion, uh, if you want, you can read the, go ahead and read your sure. conclusions. Yep. Yeah. Uh, number one, install a safety fence in the northeast section of the site until 2019 restoration, restoration work is completed as noted on the survey. Number two, the applicant shall furnish to the township a copy of the hall route permit renewal with the road commission for Oakland County for Judah Road. The current permit is set to expire on June 1st of 2019. Number three, the approximate start date and end date of any intense activity, if applicable, occurring on the site for the year should be included in the application and or notice given to the township prior to high periods of activity. Number four, per section seven, item L of ordinance 99, the applicant uh, shall note that tracking of material and dust control issues will be monitored and improvements may be required throughout the permit year. Uh, and finally, number five, per section 10 of ordinance 99, a log of each fill material load sh shall be maintained by the applicant to document all fill is suitable fill material as defined in the ordinance. In addition, the log will include one photograph of each truckload, which shall depict the contents of the fill material and the date and time of the delivery. If requested by the building official, copies of all logs and photographs shall be submitted to the Township Building Department on a monthly basis or earlier. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I also noticed requested variance. The applicant has requested a variance in the hours of operation from the allowable 7 to 5, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. to be extended from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. Questions by the board? Is yeah. that uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m.? Is that uh, coordinating again with the completion of the Baldwin Road uh, widening? Uh, we've always asked for the, the 7 to 7 time frame yeah. every single year. Nothing's changed. As far as I know, last year it was to do with the ro bo uh, road widening what I understood. Um, a couple of years ago, we didn't, we did, we, we, I think we gave you seven to five, yes. remember? Right. Two years back. Yeah. Okay. Then I believe last year it went back to the seven to seven. Yes. It, it, it comes down to those last trucks of the day trying to make it there um, to, to dump that last load before they go to their <clears throat> parking spot for the evening. Mr. Chair. Yes. 
Are you going to have to continue to run all your traffic in off Joslin? I don't know. Um, that's up to the Waymaster. It always has been. Uh, he's always wanted us to come off of Joslin. Um, but that was because it wasn't safe to enter Baldwin with, with trucks. But now with the traffic circle there, it, it might be. So I don't think we've breached that subject with the, the Waymaster yet. Uh, it's something that probably would cause the neighbors downstream there to breathe a sigh of relief if they thought they weren't getting every single truck. I don't um, disagree with that. It would probably be a lot easier coming off of Baldwin, too. How many trucks a day? Uh, I believe in the request it was 100 trucks a day. Okay. I don't think it ever reaches there, but... Okay, 100 trucks a day, thank you. Um, <clears throat> one other thing, work trucks for the Baldwin construction. Is it feasible that you're going to be opening the gates and storing some of them in a secure area at night? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Yes. I believe last year, and Bob Warren stated it, that that pit's been in operation for over 50 years. Could be. Yeah, I believe that was on last. We look in the minutes, I think it's in the record. So this pit is not, not something new on that road. Okay. And I'll be the first one to say this on the dais. I'm glad when it could finally get closed. <laughs> so will I, believe me. All those um, it, it's, get, it's getting close. Yep. Um, there's no longer a hole there. I think we can see the light at the end of the tunnel here now. It's not a train. Right? What do you now mean when you say close? <laughs> <laughs> you mean what, a year, two, three? A couple of years probably. Really? I mean, obviously this last year we put a, a lot of dirt in there. Yes, you did. Um, so if we have another year like that, it, it fills up real quick. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Don, any? This time? Okay, well, let's let listen to the, the neighbors here. I'm sure they're here. Please, anybody like to speak to this matter, come on up and state your name and address and tell us what your feelings are on this. McNabb, 2981 Judah. <coughs> First off, if this board, every member on this board, will admit that my property is on, on Ordinance 99 from 99, from when it first started till now, and never been taken off, then We'll stop there. But if not, I'll prove that my property is on that permit and I want it taken care of. Okay, just, okay. Give your comments. The one slip I just give you, <clears throat> that is Dan's attorney. And if you look down there at the bottom, he states that my property is part of the plan. After all the other stuff he says, that's down there at the bottom. Okay. In 96, 97, 98, and 99, <coughs> Dan leased that property from Bob Warren. He started out as Ordinance 40. And when the Ordinance 99 came in. Bob Warren was doing very little, if no mining at all. Dan took, took over the permit. He knew that permit was there when he took over that operation in 98. And in 99, Mark, the son of Dan bought that property. And the piece of paper that's in uh, your folder, Mark says that he will follow 
the map that was made in 98. You'll abide by that. And if, and if you don't know what that map looks like, I got it here, you can look at it. My property is on there and it's marked as leased. Okay. Then, I'm probably skipping over some of the stuff I should say. Then in, uh, I can't just remember what date it was. I was under oath and Brett Baker was under oath and I have the map that was presented under oath. And that shows my property and it was the lawyers agreed that my property was on that permit. And Brett Baker was there and I have it, it's the exhibit number one map I have. Then I have another map that says that the level of that pit will, the fill of that pit will, will not exceed 1060. That is under oath to also. And that was taken under oath in Dan Kelly's office. And he knows that my property was on that permit because that was part of the argument of that permit. Then later, under O in O twelve or something, the board requested a map to be made of the pit, of Dan's pit. And on that map, and Michael Flood seconded the map to make the map. And it came out the fact that 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 is part of Dan's per pit. My, pro my property is listed on that map that was made by the main board of this township. And I, there's a lot of little things we could go over. I got the, all the maps and everything else. And it went to court again. And during the court, I couldn't tell Dan or the township how to run that pit at all. That's what the, the Court of Appeals said for the state of Michigan. But the Court of Appeals did say that they couldn't have any water run on my property. And they said that the entire pit, the entire pit, my property's on the pit, on there, has to be leveled off at 1060 and they have to have a certified drawing or map or whatever it says there to prove to the court system that it's leveled off at 1060. So here you are dibbling in this other kind of stuff that has no bearing on what the Court of Appeals says. And I've told this board how many times in the past that it was going down the wrong road. And every, every time you'd say, well, we have to go by what's in front of us. Well, I got what's in front of you right now. And I have the, I have the map that blown up map. In fact, I have a small map there that in uh, what I gave in your packet that shows 9, 10, and 11, and 13, and 40, 14 as far as the pit. It's the pit. And that was made in 12. And then that thing, and, and Dan Kelly knows if it isn't taken care of, at the 1060 level, I have recourse through the court system, and it also says that that 1060 is final. But I, I have recourse to go on further with it. Okay. So you can make your decision, but you better talk to your attorney before you do a lot of decisions. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat>
Just state your name and address, please. My name's Larry, Larry Burns, 2800 Judah Road. Okay, Larry. I'd be opposed to them being open until 7 o'clock. Okay. I think 5 o'clock is fine for our area. I'd like to know who's responsible to maintain Judah Road, the condition of it. Okay, it's county road. So the county has to take care of it. Dan has no responsibility. Well, he, he'll have a uh, haul route from the county. They issue it. County Road Commission. So they call the Road Commission to grade that road? So that's their call. Well, the, if they don't maintain it, then the township can, or they call, and, you know, the Road Commission comes over and charges them for it. All right, because that road gets pretty bad. Yeah, in fact, even in <clears throat> one of the things, they're, they're, they have to renew it because it expires January 1st with the county, uh, June 1st with the county, then they have to renew it as part of their proceedings. Okay? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming tonight. Aren't they also supposed to put chloride down when it gets too dusty? Well, somebody has to. They've done it in the past, haven't they? Yep. And who keeps track of that? Our code enforcement? You don't have to have to hire a private. Yes. Sandra Dibble, 2281 Judah Road. Yes. Um, on several occasions, there has been trucks sitting outside at 645 a.m. running, parked back to back. And that should not be allowed. And 100 trucks a day, if you lived on that road, you couldn't have your doors open, you couldn't have your windows open because the dust is just horrible. And they have double tandems just nonstop going back and forth. And I sh if I sat there and counted them, I bet there would be more than 100. But like I said, you don't live on that road, you don't experience what we experience. And 5 o'clock, I propose, is late enough, too, for trucks to come up and down that road. And also, um, the road, I don't know who's in charge of what they're doing, but the last six months or so, when they, prior to the winter time, um, when they come by and plow the road, they're taking out, they're making a gully along all of our houses. And so now they're standing water constantly up halfway up, you know, four or five houses. Right. And it's just sloping down. And I just had my driveway redone last year. And they're taking part of that away. So I propose they do something about that. And so our road is like Swiss cheese on a regular basis. I would call the, the County Road Commission on that. Is there greater in operations that aren't doing it right? I, exactly. I, because they're supposed to, you know, you bring it up and then just flatten it back out and they're not yeah. doing that. Yeah, but they're, they're just they're trying to get a crown what they're doing, but they're digging out your material exactly. to do it. Like five or six houses. So. It's ridiculous. Exactly. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. My name is uh, Jim Swash, 2741 Judah Road. I just kind of want to say thank you for making my life just miserable the last two years. From these 100 trucks a day is, is out of control. But I know I don't want to bore you guys. You hear this every year from me because I come here almost every year. But there's no end in sight to any of this. That's my problem. And I want to know what is in that pit. What are they dumping? What kind, is it contaminated road soil? Uh, that's what my question is. What's in there? There's no contamination in there whatsoever. But what about all the tires that are buried there? There's no tires buried there either. Well, there are tires buried there. Well, they did well we've never probably. seen it since they started dumping. Well, they've been there, they're there. But I'm just worried about the contamination we're all on wells, and I'm worried that what they put in there, they took out nice clean gravel, they're gonna dump road, road waste. I mean, you might as well just not call it a landfill, it should, or you should call it a landfill, because that's what it is. Uh, yeah, and uh, I, I would be safe to say eight to two would be a good time for me for those trucks to run. I work a lot on Saturdays, I don't want to have trucks running at 6.30 in the morning, which they do, till 7.30 at night. I'm having my dinner, and it's bouncing on my table as those trucks go down the road. I mean, it's been like that for years. You, people don't really care about it, you know. You have no care about how we feel on the road. I know it's a, it's a business, but there's no end to it at all. And I'm just fed up with it. I got to go to Lansing to uh, 
object to my tax bill because of these trucks are just ripping my house apart. I got cracks all over my house. So I, I say no. Okay. Absolutely thank you. no. Gene McNabb, Orion Township. I can shed light on some of the questions that gentleman had, but first I want to start at the beginning here. On the, got a question for the engineer. On your conclusions under section five, that is not what the ordinance says. You have in there if the building official asks for pictures, they're supposed to be taking a picture of every truck that goes in there so they don't get contamination. The building official and the code enforcement guys are not experts on soil. The township ordinance was changed because of what pictures my dad produced. They changed the ordinance and made it tougher and for years I've been arguing to get the building enforcement or building director to enforce the ordinance as it's written. He refuses. He is the problem. Call your supervisor. There's a few comments made I'd just like to <clears throat> clarify. Somebody on the board said, that's why we have ordinances to correct problems. God, I wish they'd enforce them. Another comment was made, that pit's been there for 50 years. That doesn't make it okay. I watch the board meetings, I come to the zoning board meetings, things change all the time. Noise ordinance, shooting ordinances, all this stuff changes. Just because something's been there for 50 years doesn't mean it needs to operate it like it was 50 years ago. Uh, somebody mentioned something and it kind of slipped over a lot of people's heads. What's the new fill plan? I heard you refer to a new fill plan. And I have, and my dad got a topographical map of the site plan that was available at that time. Did they change it? Because now I understand they're going to start filling from the top of the hill halfway to Judah Road. If they isn't that what you said somebody I thought that's what somebody said yeah mr. chairman as, yes. as required in the ordinance the applicants required to renew the uh, plan uh, every I forget six or seven years or something like that <clears throat> and at the last meeting last year there was a request um, by the ZBA to have the applicant provide an updated plan to reflect uh, the required fill to meet township ordinances uh, for the final restoration of the site, which would include filling from the gas main easement down at a one on four. four. Uh, and then since they're basically filling the southern pit, they need to also properly manage the stormwater, which is why they are creating a retention basin towards the front to actually retain all of the stormwater on site. Which wasn't on the original. That's correct. Right. It it was an evolving plan. It, it, as, so you know as necessary right. um, so <clears throat> so yeah in this year's application um, the, the plan he's referring to that that's what's included okay there you go, so Jim. there is a new fill plan they're gonna fill up against the hill and halfway to Judah Road on a one on four one on four that's Whatever what, that's to what the is. ordinance says that's that's perfect that's what they adhere to right but when they fill one to four from their property line now you're going to have a mound that is going to encroach and have more runoff on my father's property. Something needs to be, I don't know, I, don't, I haven't seen the plan, so I can't speak to the plan. Okay. There was an issue with runoff, and maybe Dave could speak to that or not. Has anybody got a copy of the report that Tim London probably generated because of the calls we complained about the massive water pooling on the back of my father's property and I know there's one in your packet that picture I don't believe it's attached to the packet 
Pardon? I don't think believed Mr. London's. Is it? Yeah, I think so. The report, yeah, no, the report probably didn't get in there. I was no, just I there. See the, the report. Picture. I yeah, the report did. is right it's, Yeah, it's right here. We got it. No, the report from Tim London. Picture? No. The picture. The picture's in there. Yeah, where is it? Um, it's page 25 on the... Um, okay. Yes. He did have some uh, We called. Pulling. I called a couple of times, and they, they were right on it. Got to give him credit. You know, yeah, I mean, the ground was frozen, and although there was a culvert that appeared to be blocked, is that correct, Al? And um, we got that um, opened. Yeah. I See, the issue right is right before right? there was that berm there, that man made berm that is now gone. <coughs> so the culvert was put in there by orders of the zoning board because the water was running around that berm, running onto my, pro my father's property, which it should have never done. But the zoning board's only course of action was to install a culvert pipe. That culvert pipe doesn't work. The berm is gone now, and the water still comes over there on his property. And if you look at the elevations on that map, I don't know what the elevation is of the culvert pipe. But if that pond gets full, it's going to flow back out of that pipe onto the property. It's not, it isn't working. So I guess the question I have why don't he put a culvert pipe on his own property so the water doesn't get to my father's property? I guess we'll have to have the engineer. Look at Any comments on that? Um, sure. Um, <clears throat> the, the new plan does take into consideration some off-site drainage from Mr. McNabb's property. Okay. And that, that drainage is picked up by the culvert and is accounted for in the sizing of the retention pond. Um, and we um, uh, had the applicant take into consideration the, the invert of that culvert coming into the retention pond so that the proposed storage elevation, which is two 100-year storms, is below the invert of the, the culvert. Okay. Uh, so we don't foresee you know, an issue with, with the backup. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we've asked for them to create a, an overland relief route, which if the pond were to, to back up, and it would eventually spill back out into Jude Road. And that's, you know. Okay, the, that's all part of the. That's all part of the plan. Okay, that you guys engineered. We didn't or, engineer or it. That you the applicants engineer okay. prepared, we reviewed it. Got it, okay. But is, there's a, is there a plan I can get that shows a culvert in a different spot? Is that culvert staying there? Is the water still gonna run on my father's property? Because just earlier, you were complaining about a gutter on somebody else's property. No, I think you I'm just, just mentioned that they're they're talking about building the pond to be able to take two 100-year storms, if I listen correctly. That's correct. The culvert's not proposed to be moved. It's it's from its current location. Just going to be the retention pond will be bigger to be able to handle whatever water yes. that is. Yes. With the runoff. Correct. Okay. So if the culvert pipe's staying where it is, which I'm hearing, the water should not run on the lot next door to access a culvert that is on his property. It shouldn't do it. You guys know that. You just were worrying about a gutter spout on somebody else's property. I, I'm, I'm so confused, I just don't believe it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I want to get back to one thing. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but uh, I'm, I'm so glad some of the residents finally showed up. The the enforcing of what comes in and out of there, the dirt, it specifically spells out at Ordinance 99 what is supposed to happen. They're supposed to keep a daily log of all the trucks that go in and out of there, and with that, they're supposed to take a picture of every truckload that comes in and out of there. Let me stop you there. No, because... no I've got the floor. Just let okay. me finish. I've been to that man's office, the building director, probably three times trying to get that taken care of it. He refuses. I had a meeting with the supervisor, that gentleman, and the code enforcement. The supervisor told me they will start taking pictures. I had another meeting with Dave, and he told me I'm not going to obey his order. I'm not going to take pictures. I'm so glad Mr. Kelly's here. He's making big money doing it, but I, I just I lost. We have a right to know what's in there. For the last five years, they have not taken a picture. I, it's just, it's so mind boggling. I, I, I'm, I'm done with that, but there you go. Let's see. Okay. 
<laughs> he the building director went as far as he'll do half of it which is a piece of paper that Dan's excavating generates and emails to him of where the trucks allegedly come from and I'll just leave it at that everybody's complaining about the trucks you got to think of that a little farther that's a hundred trucks a day that's 200 trucks by your house they go in and they come out do the math that's potentially a truck every six minutes that's crazy the hours it's a residential street they lowered the hours from seven to seven to seven to five one year because a few neighbors complained the next year which was last year none of the neighbors showed up except my father and I so they looked in the crowd and said well nobody's complaining about it so we're gonna go from seven to seven this is this whole thing is crazy I hope it gets resolved soon and I'm sure mr. Kelly knows where this is going thank you very much okay Dave do you have some comments there? yeah um, it always seemed to me when I first took this position I got here uh, yeah there was never photo logs taken um, typically Al would go out three four times a week to look at the piles and see what's going in there um, I trust that process and I trusted Al's judgment but uh, just recently I did um, email the applicant and I requested that he does maintain those logs and if they don't then they're getting charged for Al's time out there I also um, charge them for the time that our code enforcement spent on the soil erosion issue with uh, Mr. McNabb's property. So we are taking measures to ensure that that fill is safe and we always have. And um, I think, you know, when you have a 50 year train, it's hard to get it turned around. Yeah. But uh, we've been working diligently at it and I think we're on the right track, don't you, Dale? I mean, it's always seemed to me when I first got here that it, yeah a photo you could just like Mr. McNabb said allegedly where the truck came from well allegedly where the photo and you don't need a soil engineer I mean I don't know what a fo photo is going to tell you about soil but you could take a same photo of one mound of soil 15 different ways mm -hmm. but when I got a guy out to act there with the boots looking on the ground it. looking at it I think I felt better with that but I have uh, requested that they do start sending photos and, you know, uh, we are charging for the time. I mean, it doesn't seem to me like we don't want Al out there looking at this property and making sure what they're dumping or what they're putting in there. So, like I said, uh, we're, I think we're working towards. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Yes, yep. yes, sir. State your name and address, please. Good evening. Uh, Gary Skritsky. 2735 Judah Road. Okay, Gary. We're about seven lots down from going uh, east down Judah Road from the uh, area that they're filling in. Our backyard, though, goes extends all the way back to Menards, and we're open to that area. So the question I have, when I hear numbers, being an engineer, I, uh, I start thinking, okay, what type of controls are being put in place? For example, there was a comment made about dust control. What type of method is going to be put in place? Maybe this is good for the engineering consultant. What type of method is going to be used for dust, dust control? What is the standardized method for dust control? What is the acceptable practice for dust control? So I can go on and on. I can write a whole DVPNR, which I'm sure you understand what that is, on how we would manage dust control. So I just want to know, when people throw out general terms like that, they need to understand that there should be specifications and regulations on what that means. So the question I have is, how is dust control going to be controlled? Because last year, we couldn't open our windows at all. I would wash my house, I mean, wash my car, sorry, and literally an hour later, because I can see their trucks, and I understand this, this hole is going to get filled. Mm -hmm. Pulling teeth, whatever, ticking and screaming, this hole is going to get filled. And you got a bunch of people that are upset about it. I, I think maybe uh, I understand that's going to happen. They're going to get that hole filled because somebody's got prime real estate there that they want to build on. I understand how that all works. I'm not going to make anything. But I want to know, until we get to that point, what controls are going to be put in place? And let's just talk about dust control. Is there a state regulation for dust control? And what does that actually mean? Well, I can tell you from experience that 
the standard is four applications in a township per year. That's a standard for uh, Class B County Road, okay? Gravel Road. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not necessarily anything, referring to... I know, and anything... Be, well, I'm just trying to explain the county part of it. You yep. know, that's their standard. And then when you have a haul route, if they get a complaint, a lot of times their trucks are somewhere else, you know, because they do the whole county. Yep. So then a private contractor would come and spread uh, calcium chloride on the road, and um, they'd be charged for it. Yep. So it's there really is no standard beyond the four applications which is what is the normal okay our, and that's road. great because you actually brought up a, a whole nother subject i'm going to talk about you're talking about the road we're driving on i'm talking about when they're dumping the gravel oh i see in the yard gotcha right you get dust turns up you can see even when they tear down a house in detroit they got somebody with a fire hydrant or hose right they're spraying yeah. it down because they want to keep all the dust everything controlled so what is the standard practice in the yard that is defined by the county, the state, our township for dust control. That's actually in the soil erosion and sedimentation for the property itself. Now I can't speak on the county road for. But do you that, understand where I'm going here? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay. You know, okay. like when they're so driving their trucks, that needs to be watered down so it doesn't put any airborne dust in the right. air. Do they have somebody on site that's actually spraying the dirt as it's pouring out of the truck to keep that down? And it is typically that done in each yes. Truck? Yeah. Okay. Now, be careful if you say yes, because I can walk up the hill and watch all this. Yeah, happen. no, I okay. understand. And you know, so. when we do get a complaint about yep. dust, we get on the phone. We call. Okay. Al actually calls. So I just his I want contact. the people here that I live next to to understand that as well. All right. Yeah. So we all, I've been listening, and I'm gonna I want to touch on a couple subjects. Uh, the next subject uh, Lauren brought up about the road. Um, <clears throat> You said the four applications. The four standard applications. Four standard applications for grading the road, correct? Or is for chloride application. Okay, chloride application. Generally graded before, but the road could be graded ten times if they have the capability. Okay. And I know that you keep saying that the county manages the road. That's their road. But they own it. They own it. But does the township define based on the traffic that that road would typically see the amount of maintenance it requires per year and what that is? I'd say no. Okay, so we would have to go to the county commissioner and say, or the county and say, based on the, the traffic on that road, so there's uh, 50 residents, mm -hmm. they, I would like to think that they say, okay, 50 residents, you have 200 cars driving at least twice a day down the road. You can do the math, axles, weight, uh, you know, wear and tear. We gonna, we're going to grade this road once every three months. Right. But if I have 100 trucks coming in, yeah. And 100 trucks going out, I've increased my axle weight, my wear and tear on the road. I can exponentially say, okay, I'm actually getting three months worth of traffic in three weeks. I could do the math. If I, I mean, I'm just yeah. throwing out numbers. Yeah. So every three weeks, theoretically, if I base my calculations in every three months based on the current, and keep in mind, I'm just throwing abstract numbers out I, here. I understand. That uh, I should be grading that road every three weeks. That's because now I've, ex I've exceeded the capabilities of that road, yep. and now I'm degrading it to the point in which it's not safe. And I know we've talked about safety here. We just talked about somebody who wanted to build a garage, but they can't back out of the garage because it's unsafe for a residential street that's not getting 100 trucks a day, right? Okay. So I just want to tag on the safety issue here. I think we mentioned, I don't know if you heard it, the haul route? Yeah, the, the haul route from the county. Yep. And that... You know, you get a haul route because you've exceeded the normal traffic amount. Yep. Okay. So the haul route, in fact, gives permission to the entity watching, in this case, the, the township, saying, okay, it's dusty out there. You guys have to provide some dust control. Yep. And that's where I'm going. I'm going, it's like when I hear controls, I think in my job, and I have controls in place, I have to say, am I going to test something every three hours, every 30 hours, every three weeks, what it may be? When it calls I, me. Right. So that, that, that's why I'm asking these questions, to right. start understanding. Totally we, understand. Trying to drill down, mm -hmm. we, we talk in generalities. People say, oh, 100 trucks. How do we know it's 100 trucks? Yeah. All right. How, how do we really know? I mean, we can talk, okay, you're going to hire somebody to sit in a car and actually sit there with a clicker? Yeah. That would be cost. And then you'd have to say to Dan, oh, you got to pay for this. And he's going to say, bullshit. I'm not going to pay $10 an hour for somebody to sit there and count cars. 
Right. Right. He's going to be yeah. pissed off because we're going to say, how, how do we know that's going to be there? OK, yeah. I, I'm going to be realistic. Where, where here. are we going? On this? Right. I, mean, I don't want to. But I'm, no, I'm just bringing up. I'm just want to vocalize totally the concerns and where we have where do we have to take this? Where do we have to bring this to really understand how are we affecting the citizens that live on this road? I understand this hole is going to get filled. I, it's it's that I'm not I'm not naive enough to say this isn't going to happen. Okay, now right? if you have concerns about the county road, I would call the county. Okay. If you have concerns about the pit, call the township. Okay. The last que the last request I'd like to make is that no trucks after 5 p.m. That's my official that's my absolute request. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay. So, just to let you know where I'm thinking, all right? Okay. Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming. Hello, Eric Bedell, 2671 Judah Road. Okay. Uh, just like to echo a couple other things, but also I'm glad there's a lot of people here. <clears throat> um, you mentioned on some of the other properties that you do site visits, not just one of you, but a lot of you. So I'm just curious how often you guys do visits on Judah Road itself. What was the question? Three times a week at least. Three times a week for just one of you or two of you? Or for me. For you yourself? I don't see your name tag. Who are you, sir? El Beasley, Code Enforcement. Okay. <clears throat> uh, and so the hours, what are the hours that they're supposed to operate as they stand now? 7 to 7 currently. That's Current? what their request is. 7 to 5 by ordinance. Currently it's 7 to 5. Is 7 to 7? By ordinance. By, by ordinance. Five. Okay. They're asking for 7 to 7. They're asking oh. for a variance of two hours extra. I think he's asking about what the class is. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking... Today, Currently. what are they allowed seven. to do? Seven. Seven. seven to seven. seven, to seven. <laughs> no, six. It's six. six days. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're hearing about time and how many trucks a day. So, uh, li like other people have said, what, what kind of standards can we hold up to? No, obviously, no one's going to sit there and click and count cars, but if they're going to be constantly breaking the rules, uh, either with time or with the amount of cars, uh, what are we supposed to do? <clears throat> What's the point of standing here and talking about it if we're not actually going to enforce these things? Well, Does that make sense? You, you'd have to contact us at the township. I, I, that's I why I'm here. I'm contacting okay. you today. I did not get one complaint after hours. At the I, I just okay, moved to Judah Road. I'm a new resident. to the board, okay? Yeah. If you want an answer from the building department, they will answer it. Yeah. Now, what's your sure. question? Uh, how are you going to enforce the rules that we're trying to imply today. <clears throat> we're t we're t the gentleman who spoke for Dan's was talking about time. I'm talking about time. So if, if they're going to be to 7 to 7, how do we know that the, the last truck's not going to roll out at 7.05? And not just once, but multiple times. I'm just asking, what kind of standards are we being, up are being upheld to? So... Uh, really really quick, I have, I have a microphone in front of me, and I can't hear any of you speak. Sir, Could you please speak into the microphone? Yeah. You can't hear me speak? Uh, no, nah, I can hear you much better. Thank you. Okay. The bottom line is this. We haven't agreed on 7 to 7 this year. We're, that's why we're here. Yeah. It's for the current permit. Right. Okay. For the new permit. The current permit, 7 to 7. 7 to 5 is the ordinance. Sure. Do you agree? Do you want seven to five or you want seven I to seven? I would like seven to five. Okay. But Thank my you. question is, irregardless what of is the your time, question? irregardless of the time, whether it be midnight, if they go over their allotted time, what are the repercussions for their actions? Good question. If there's, you know. That's why I'm addressing. We have to have a complaint first, and we've had no complaints. Not one. How would one file an official complaint if this does oh, not serve as one? The Sorry? Oh. Call the township. Code call the township. Yes. Okay. Yep. Call the building department. You can talk to the code enforcer. Okay. Um, okay. If you do produce, you know, if they are running past the time, they can be fined. It's right in our ordinance. Okay. And, um, and then the other gentleman mentioned uh, the use of Baldwin Road uh, as an alternative to Joslin Road. And is, is that up to, was it the Waymaster to determine? I think he said the Waymasters, yes. Okay. So it's up to him to determine the logistics if that is okay generally waymaster gives them the hall route okay and how would one know if that was okayed other than visually seeing to the township of the hall route am i correct yes, yes. that's correct that's correct 
to the have to provide a yep. copy to the township. Okay, and that would be, I w how would I be able to see that? Probably call FOIA the FOIA request. Yeah. I would have to request it? FOIA request, yes. Okay. FOIA request. Okay. Yeah. Again, it's hard, it's hard to hear you. I'm the youngest uh, guy here, I and bet. I can't hear you. A FOIA request is how you would uh, obtain something like that from the township. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all. Well, thank you. Anybody else? Oh, you know. Hello, my name is Joel Altus, 2736 Judah. Hey, Joe. First of all, I'd like to just say, if any of you guys lived on Judah Road, there was no way you would approve longer hours than what we already have. I'm totally against the seven to seven. I don't think they should be able to run on Saturdays. I don't think they should be able to run at seven o'clock in the morning. I don't get up at seven o'clock in the morning. I don't see why they should run that early. Uh, not too many people work a 12 hour day. I don't, usually not anyways. Um, again, I don't wanna beat a dead horse. Everyone's got their complaints. I've had times where I can't back out of my own driveway. There's trucks lined up all the way down. I can't keep my windows open in the house in the summer. I can't keep my car clean. I hesitant to have people over on the weekends to have a dinner or a barbecue because the noise is ungodly. I live 150 feet off the road and my house shakes when the trucks come by. The windows rattle. It's not an old house. I just don't understand what Dan's excavating does for Orion Township. We have approximately, I think about 75 homes on Judah Road, approximately. Three, 400 people probably in those homes. <clears throat> Every year, you get a handful or more, they come and complain about the same thing. I don't know why three or 400 people should be put, you know, aside so Dan can run trucks in and out of there. We pay a lot of money in taxes. I've lived on Judah Road for almost 30 years, uh, since 92. And even back then I was told that it's almost full, it'll be done soon. I've been hearing that for 30 years. It's almost full, they're almost done. That's what the real estate agent told me when she sold me the house. It won't <laughs> be much longer, they're almost done. Yeah. 30 years later, here we are. I, I just don't see the value Dan's excavating doesn't bring any money to Orion Township. They, pray, they probably pay a few dollars in property taxes. You know, I don't know what they pay. I can guarantee you that we pay a whole lot more over 75 residences. Every year our taxes go up, 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 but our quality of life is going down. I, I don't see why, I don't even understand why we're here. I really don't. Every year we complain about it, nothing ever changes. I, I, don't, I don't know why we're even having this conversation. I really don't understand. Okay. There's not gonna be one person on the entire road that would speak for Dan's excavating, not one. There would be not one person who would say, yeah, it's okay, I don't mind the trucks. Not one. So why, I don't understand why, I just don't. Makes no sense to me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to correct two statements. <coughs> Eugene McNabb, 2981 Judah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the one person was up here and he said, prime real estate when they're done. Prime real estate? They dug 80 foot deep, never compacted it, and I used to give you pictures of the junk that was thrown in, in that pit. And the ones that's been on the board a long time know that you got pictures stored that's got junk in it. That's one thing. It's, it's not prime real estate at all. It's junk. It's got material. It's got lead in it because it come off the side of the road. Nobody's corrected that. And the second thing was stated was the fact that one time the Ordinance 99 said they had to have a civil engineer 
registered engineer from the state of Michigan check that pit continuously to make sure what went in and out of that pit. <coughs> well, I don't like to throw names, but Mr. Kelly was on that board one night and he said, we, we can get around that. So we'll fix it to where you take pictures of every vehicle and where it was at and the time and everything else. So they changed ordinance 99. They deliberately changed the ordinance and it's in the ordinance that they have to take the pictures. And they're not even doing that today. Okay, thank I you. hate to put you on the spot, but you said it. <laughs> you, remember, you were here when you dug it up and tested it. Okay. okay, anybody else? Terry Moran, 2740 Judah Road. Terry. Uh, been there since 1980. And uh, the trucks have been running almost continuously for that nearly 40 years that I've been there. Mm -hmm. And for me, the dust is a pain in it. We all know that. And the, and the condition of the road and the shaking of the house. But for me, what's driving me absolutely bonkers is the noise. Anybody ever stood next to one of those gravel trains and mm -hmm. listen to the roar of those? How would you like that? All day long, day after day, for 40 years. How would that affect you guys? Would that drive you nuts? My house is about 60 feet from the road. You can keep all the windows closed, put some plugs in your ears, and you can still hear them damn things roaring. What do you think that does for property values? But it's the noise. It's just incredible I don't have the numbers that McNabs came in here with I'm just trying to present a case like a number of the, my other neighbors here is that why is it that 75 residences are being persecuted by the, that truck traffic is it that important that Dan has one has a, a pit in the center of a residential street? Can't that be done away with now? Why do, like a number of the other people have said, that we've been promised year after year after year that it's only going to be another year or two or three. I've been hearing that for 20 years. 20 years. No one can give us a date. I, mean, I don't really want a date unless it's tomorrow. I'm going to see that Tr truck traffic stop now. We've had enough. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> see if we can lighten this up. Uh, Dan Dewey, 2511. I was going to watch it at home tonight, too. Gene, you're right. We're all chicken. I mean, you get used to it. So this morning at 7 o'clock, I hear this noise that I forgot to remember what the noise was. In other words, what is that? It's a big engine moving slow, but there's metal rattling. I forgot all about that because today was, of course, opening day, like Tiger Stadium. It's opening day for the pit. I look out, and here's this guy. He's not even doing five miles an hour. He's the first one. He must have got the short straw. He had to. He's the first one coming up the road like he's trying to hide. And I go, I got to outrun this guy. I mean, he was, he was going that slow. And I thought, okay, I'll come out here. But it started in 58. The, the pit started in 58. They cleared the trees because it's pure sand. It's a sand dune that starts over on Baldwin and goes across to Washington's Johnson. And, of course, where was it all going? I-75. So now where's it coming from? <laughs> I-75, slightly used. You can't get a full refund for it. But when he was uh, much younger and so was I, I delivered his paper, and that was uh, 61 years ago. There was 24 houses on the road. 
And then it started, and it was going out. So everybody realized they could only take so much only because the pipeline was on top of it. Right. If the pipeline wasn't there, they, you could look straight across the Brown Road. So we all just got used to it because what are we going to do? We got used to it, and then they took all this out. It never dawned on us they're going to bring stuff back in because it was a pit. <coughs> when you got up on top, it was serious pit down there. Well, then they start bringing it in. You're going, okay. And it's, I mean, it's all legal. They bought it from Warren. He, his dad and mother had it. Okay, here we are. So we just got used to it. Now, you've got several things going on. Uh, McNabb's property has to be dealt with. That appears to be the one main issue property-wise. The ordinance, if it could be changed, it'd be nice. Um, that seems like the only thing anybody has. But there has to be at least 100 trucks. I, I'm not going to count them. Going in and going out. And I'll give them credit for one. I'll say one nice thing about them. These guys are respectful. Over 90% of these guys go slow and get out of the way if you're on the road. The dust is another thing. I can't think nice about the dust. But they are. And once in a while, we get a cowboy who figures he can go 45 the whole road. Well, he does that maybe once. I'm sure one of these other guys tells him that he's getting paid by the hour so that he calms down. And it goes back to being, but I don't envy you having to listen to all of us because what else have we got? We're so used to it, and we do want it to end, and then we hear two years, and we just all hang our heads. But I do envy the part that none of you live on Judah Road because you can't, we can't put it into words. Jeff talks, we can't put it into words. It's just continual. It doesn't end. Six days a week, say 7 to 7, 6.30, 6.30, it's six days a week. And then Sunday you don't notice it because it's not there. You can hear the birds again. But again, it's all legal, and there seems to be two areas, Mc, McNabb's property, and then if we somehow find a way to change the ordinance, which I have no idea how that would happen. But it's just, you can live with it because you know you have to live with it. And after 60 years, you just figure, okay, then you hear two more years, you just drop, and you're going, all right. The rumor started last summer, August. The rumor says that maybe it's time to close it. That rumor started. I don't know where it started, but it was a nice rumor. You can't. I mean, you, you have to allow it it's, if they comply with the ordinance, as Mike told me. If they comply with the ordinance, and Al's right there, I mean, they ha you have to say, go ahead. Seven to five, seven to seven, that seems to be the only variable. But thank you, and I'm glad they did come, Gene. Thank you for that. But this guy is the best here. It's Senior McNabb. If we are half that sharp at his age, he's fought all this stuff from the beginning, and phew, but thank you. I just wish I could run like you. <laughs> thank you. Hi, Jeff Antosiak, 2760 Judah. Uh, sorry, I missed the first few minutes of the uh, meeting. Uh, I've lived on Judah for 29 years now, next month. And I came and spoke regularly to the ZBA for the first few years and heard the same thing over and over again. And like most of my neighbors, we got tired of it. And that's probably why attendance fell off quite a bit. After a while, if it falls on deaf ears, you just don't keep speaking. Um, so as far as missing the beginning, I don't know where the hundred trucks a day came from. Uh, is that in the permit? That's in the per they're limited to 100 in, 100 out. And if they're in ex excess of that, I complain to building department, ordinance um, enforcement. I thought that was just an estimate. I didn't know if that was an actual running number. Is that correct? I, I believe you're correct. It's an estimate? Yeah, I think, it, uh, I think the application says Up to it, it's, it's an estimate. Estimate. An okay. Estimate, okay. So it's not... Uh, hours not operation, binding. our hours are operation. Assuming. Okay, so estimate's not binding. Could be 400 trucks. <laughs> when I first came in years ago, 
Bob Warren's permit was for 10 trucks a day. Jeez. And we'd see two to 300 trucks going in and out. And when I brought that up, I said, we may get 200 trucks going in and 200 trucks coming out. And they said, we have never heard anything like that. And Bob's like, I'm only using 10 trucks. <laughs> so anything happened? No. It, it changed the permit and it went up. So um, I don't think, I don't know who's representing Dan's, but whoever's driving or whoever's driving the trucks, they're doing great. 10 miles an hour, very courteous for most of them. Yeah, like uh, Mr. Dewey said, there's the occasional cowboy, 45, 55, not good. But uh, I don't think anything's going to change here until it's filled. And we could say make it go away. Dan's will sue the township. They've got bigger pockets than the township does. We just need to get it filled as soon as possible, I think. And also, how do we change the haul route? Now that we've got these fabulous roundabouts, there's no issue with them going out on Baldwin. And so rather than drive three quarters of a mile on our poor road, they can just drive a quarter of a mile out to Baldwin. So that might have been covered, but who controls the haul route? Is that Oakland County? Yep. Yep. We know. Okay. So we talk to Oakland County, see how that's changed, then we bring that back to the township. I'm we'll, sorry. Check, we'll check on it. I'm, and I'm, how do we hear back on that? Well, I don't control the waymasters. You know, all I can do is... It's the waymaster that controls the whole route? The whole route, yeah. Whole okay. route. Whole route. I'm okay. sorry. Whole route. I'm sorry. So, um, so I mean, we township... can... Can we make a request to that? You know, What's that? The no. waymaster to check the whole route? Please make a request. A request to Baldwin? To the uh, haul route to be changed to Baldwin Road. The problem we're going to run with right now, Baldwin Phase One. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, sir. I'm just talking to here. Baldwin Phase One is not finished yet. Uh, from I-75 to from Judas. From Brown Road is... to Gregory. That's Phase One. Okay. Well, that has not been one. completed yet. They're working on the completion of that as we speak. Uh, phase Two will go into effect after phase one is completed. So that would weigh a lot on the waymaster's decision because they are still doing construction in phase one. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember where Gregory is. I've been here 29 Gregory's, years. <laughs> Gregory's up by the old hardware used to be. By the okay, that's wash. north of Judah. Yes. That's, that's a quarter of a mile north of Judah. That's if right. most of that their trucks are coming from I-75, that's they phase one. Yeah. Well, they won't be up near Gregory. Everything up to Judah is pretty much completed. No, it's not. What's not complete? They well, still have know, to put safety uh, pass in. With all due respect, we <laughs> don't control the roads, right. oh. and nor does the CBA. So I know there's lots of issues with yep. the road, but I think the chair is correct. Those comments should be directed to the road commission in the county who sets the roads okay we don't so, have any control over them perfect we just need a, a road map here so to speak right. yep. so if it's the county that's going to control the whole route whole route yep. um you say either um, <laughs> so either. is the township going to follow up on this or is it up to the citizens on jude road <laughs> well, I mean, you I'm can, asking the you tough know, the, questions the here. The building department may make a request, but quite frankly, the road commission has their own processes for how they control haul roads, how they manage, maintain, repair that's, existing That's fine. Do they, are they going to listen to an ordinary citizen to make the request, or does it have to come I, from a township? I don't know that they're going to listen to the township either. I mean, they make their own decisions based upon their own standards that I don't know, okay. nor does this board know. I understand. So that's the, the issue. It's the county. Yes, it's okay. the county. So if I follow up with the county and they say the request has to come from the township, who would I speak with at the township to initiate the request to change the route? Whoever the county tells you to talk to. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I guess we could start at the supervisor and work our way down. Okay. So good. Very good. Okay. Thank you all for your time. Well, thank you for coming tonight. You bet.
Okay, Brett. Oh, we got one more. We have more. I just want to ask our Patsy Moran from 2740 Tudor Road. I want to ask a stupid blonde question. Um, are they taking dirt out of the pit too? Did they come with trucks and take things out? No. Then how come it's taking them from 1958 to now with 200 trucks a year or a week or a day going up and down that road to fill the hole? It shouldn't have taken over 50 years to fill it that It depends hole. where Dan gets the dirt and how much they have. What's that? What's that mean? They have different construction sites that may be further away no, that they don't bring dirt in there. Yeah, but how long it takes that long to fill that hole over? Again, it depends where the dirt is coming from. That doesn't make sense because if, if 200 trucks a day or 100 trucks a day are going down there with a load, how come it takes, and they're doing that six days a week for 12 hours a day lit lately, but that hole has been open since, he said, 1958? How come it's taken them this long to fill it? Well, it's a matter of the size of the hole, is the, the cubic yards to take to fill by the number of cubic yards they have to fill it. I mean, it was really a big hole, and now they have, by ordinance, do a one-on-four from the back, you know, the top slope, so they have additional uh, material to bring in to create that slope. So it's, just, it's a matter of size of area by the number of trucks coming in, bringing in so much uh, tonnage. You know, it's so just is that, that uh, slope, is that an indication that they're heading toward completion of filling? Absolutely. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. I'd like to stick my two cents worth in, ma'am. Finally, we're talking slopes. <laughs> when I, I've been on the board here for quite some time. The first time I went out to, to those pits, I was, I was thunderstruck by what that looked like, how deep it was. I, I, I told my friends, I said, I just left the surface of the moon. I mean, you can't believe how, when you, we're saying a pit or a hole, Mr. Mc, the McNabs will know, that was unbelievably large. And I know you've all heard, it's, it's getting there, it's getting there. This year, when, when there is almost no pit, it, it's almost level. Now, they're, they're, that's why they're worrying about the slope now. Okay. Because it is almost filled, and I know you don't want to hear that, especially from someone who doesn't live on Judah Road, because I don't. <laughs> but I'm going to say 90 percent, 95 percent of that of that is filled. Okay. And Lord willing, if we can't get the the way is the waymaster is that the it would be the waymaster yeah to, to change all route. because that makes a great deal of sense to me. If, if, if it's okay with them, but again, we don't have control over that. To just spin it off of Baldwin, now that Baldwin is almost completed to that, to that would make so much more sense, and you people wouldn't have to deal with it anymore. Because yeah. there's but only a couple of residents. On, that, on the other end. <laughs> well, but, no, but short yeah, distance. the other end is, well, none of you live it's, in the it's other their, end. It's their them. share. It's time for them right, to share. Right, right. So <laughs> it's their turn for a little bit of time. But, but. I can't tell you when it'll be filled, but I do believe it'll be filled very shortly. Is there anything that you can do? You want to come up? Uh, please come up here, sir. Sorry. Otherwise, we can't get it in the minutes. That's all. Yeah, Terry Miranda. Yeah, Terry. Uh, is there anything that you guys can do to expedite that change in route? No. I, I mean, I, I don't. Know. I don't know why it's left up to us. No, no. To come I was, up with that. We, if we could do it, I think we would do it. I, this whole board, I think, would do it if we could do it. Yeah, I don't really have. You know, a phone call from you guys, I bet you, carries a lot more weight than it does from Terry Moran. No. 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 Well, I don't know. You know, I have a comment. I didn't even know about this. I want everybody here to know that, speaking for myself, I may not live on Judah Road. I've been on this board seven years, and I've heard all these, and I do understand and I care what a home means to a person. It's For me, my home is my place of refuge, my place, my place of peace, and it, it just means the world to me to go home. Well, we you know, I understand, but I, what I, all I want you guys to know home. is Absolutely. that, you know, we care. We really do yeah. care. But you have to understand something. We, we have... We have per parameters of the law that we have to 
abide by. What I'd like to ask the, the board members here to do is do something about the hours um, of operation. I think that I don't blame you guys for. To, I mean, yeah. Cut that down. I don't want to have dinner and have you know dust. I don't know what I would do. I have asthma, so I don't know what I would do with the dust issue either. I just want you guys to know that to the extent that you understand that, and we do care about you. We really do. We may not be able to do what you want us to do for you, but we do care. Okay. Yes, Mike. Oh, is the gentleman done so I can, we can talk now? Yeah. Um, I talked to the building department. They're going to make a call and see what the haul route currently is and if there's maybe a change. Yeah, I don't want to necessarily punish those guys, but we for 40 years we've been taking 98% of the traffic has been right up in my house. Okay. So if it just came in from their side, for the couple of years, I agree. it's going to take. Better, but we can't force that. That's all. Yeah, I know you can't force it, but it, whatever you can do. Okay, we will try. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh -huh. Yes, Mike, are, people, are people coming up for the second time to talk now, or are we going through? Uh, I don't know. Well, I just yes. have a follow up for okay. the okay. what's okay. going into the pit. Yeah, uh, I mean, name, we please. could solve we could solve this problem pretty quick if they took the dirt that they stockpiled on Columbia Street in Pontiac and brought that over instead of diverting it to drop it there and have Judah Road. They could fill that pit in this week with the amount of dirt they have stockpiled in Pontiac okay. in their main yard. I mean, it's, I don't know why they're diverting it there just to keep it open for future or something. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mike. Oh, somebody else wants to talk. Um, Catherine Young, 2671 Judah Road. Um, you in the green, I forget your name. Al. You had said previously that there is absolutely no contaminants going into the pit. And I would like to know how you prove that. Because there's nothing in that dirt piles. That are where, where are you get? that's just empty words to me. How, how do you know that there is nothing in there and how do you know? There, we where's the proof? We test the dirt, we look at the dirt. Okay, you don't test it so you know what's in it. That doesn't make any sense. Well, as long as there's no hazardous material hanging out of that or any... Why is there no test done on it? This is going into our no, soil, no, our no, water, no, no, no. but people ordinance. live there. It's not required by ordinance. It's not well, ordinance. Not yeah. ordinance. But so it doesn't matter. It could be anything... It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's not in the ordinance. It's not part of the law. How can it be in the ordinance? Because this is people's lives that you clearly don't care about i live here this makes me not want to live here anymore and i love my house but this makes me not want to live there and it's a beautiful area i love orion township but i gotta say i am so disappointed that this is what we have okay. i am so disappointed and i am asking to know what is going in there i'm didn't realize it's not in the ordinance, but I feel like I have a right to know. The ordinance states what material can go in there, so if you read the ordinance, it tells you okay, what material can go in Okay, that's a there. different, what can go in and what goes in. That's different. It's in the ordinance of what material can go in there. Okay, no. And no. also, we did soil borings. We don't test it. Yeah, we did soil borings. We did testing. We did soil borings years ago when Mr. McNabb asked. How many years ago? Uh -huh. I'd have to look in the minutes. Okay, that, just, that means nothing. Let me finish. Will you let me finish, answer your question, please, ma'am? I have concerns with you. I'm concerned, too, about our environment. Very concerned. Yeah, I, I am. I used to work in a powerhouse for 40 years at General Motors, and we had the same concerns you did to the environmental process. I worked for 40 years as an engineer. Okay. The ordinance states what can go in that pit. What can go in the pit? You have to read the ordinance yourself. Read okay. the ordinance, it tells you. You have to do a little homework yourself. But my issue is we what can and what does is not the same We did soil borings to see to make thing. sure that that ordinance wasn't being violated. Who is Our engineer keeping came track back. of this Let to me make finish, sure. please. The engineer came back. If you want answers, I'll answer. But I'll just keep quiet. I just want to know who's held accountable for what's going in there. Because um, it feels like no one cares. Hold on. Uh, we care. We care. Actually, if I we didn't. Know care we would just accept a photo and say oh that looks good but we actually send people out there all the time to make sure he's looking at the soil we do three times you a week. you define all the time 
three times a week. You Someone can looks check at our that records. soil yes, three times you can a check, week. You can FOIA really? the records, and Al's out there three times a week. And now it's on their dime. We plan on bringing the full ordinance to bear on the financials to get them to motivate to close that pit, just so you know. We are okay. now doing our due diligence on that. Okay. Well, you understand if we don't say anything, nothing changes. Honestly, this is the most people I've seen at one of these meetings, and well, I've only been here three years, and only two I've are, ever seen are those two right gentlemen right there. We are new residents this. as of July of 2018, and we're here. Mm -hmm. okay. And mm -hmm. I'm just saying. And just we've heard you, and we're listening. FYI, too, um, all of you, and I've n I had two complaints about after hours. I've never, I've never had a complaint about after hours. I've had two complaints at dust last year, right? Well, we're new, well, so. You, you really need to, you know, speak we up will. if you have an issue. <laughs> well, you know, I mean. Okay, okay, that's, that's enough. We're not going to get an argument. Well, that's the issue. And I'd like to believe that this is going to end soon, but based on everyone who's been here all this time, that's just shit and <laughs> no offense well, that's, that's your opinion we're here to hear what you have to say okay I'm just saying that that's all you've been saying for all these years and it it's clearly not true but I would like to believe that it is ending in a year or two or whatever okay. well hopefully it will <sighs> and Thank these you. are citizens of your township and you are putting some fat cat over them that's it okay thank you um, I'd like to comment I do believe five or six years ago before Dave came that we had somebody go out there and was, they dug holes tested it they yeah so boring remember the yeah yeah in fact Orchard Hills was in charge of it yep are we doing with the public yeah comment? okay well okay so okay so go ahead my brother uh, come on up Like Mr. Dewey said, this pit's been in operation for 60 years. Yeah. Um, Bob Warren took out, God, I don't know how many millions of yards of dirt out of there. It, it might be in the millions when they built I-75. That's what the, that whole pit was dug for I-75 to be built. Our ordinance says when you take something out of the earth, you have to put it back in and balance it off. And that's what we're talking about here now is the earth balancing. There's no more mining going on in there. It's Brett, all been filled. You know, I think the consensus here, yeah. and at least I can only speak for myself, is I don't think I can vote for seven to seven. Seven to five is that's going to. I pretty much gathered that. Yeah. Well, that's I'd gather that. Yeah. What's that? Seven that. to five. Is well, here's here's our concern last year. These guys had the contract with Baldwin Road widening. Right. I know. And if you want to hold the Baldwin Road widening, you know, it was kind of working with them to get the Baldwin Road uh, to pick closer to five, and they got trucks sitting out there on Baldwin, and they yeah. can't dump, the, dump their stuff, so it's going to halt the, uh, the project up. Yeah. yeah, you know what? And, I, and we waived that, that, too, on M24 the same way. Yeah. yeah. But on the other hand, too, is there's alternate dump sites that contractors have. So, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd rather balance the, myself, I'm only speaking about myself, right, right. I'd rather balance the residents have to listen than you to any of that right. stuff past five o'clock, rather than, you know, I mean, Brett can, those guys can find an alternate site. I'm sure they yeah. have them. We, we could, that's up to us if you want to put the 7-7. Seven seven. But I just want to give you the alternative. If it holds up the ball and road construction, yeah. then you'll know what caused to hold up the ball and road yeah. construction. Yeah, okay, I can live with it. Um, <clears throat> what about how many trucks do you actually think you have? I have no clue. No clue? Uh, I mean, no. Running? Can we? Dave, Dave and Al, can, they can uh, talk to the guy. They, they have the phone numbers of the guys that are run on the trucks that are in there. I have logs on the trucks on how many. Yeah, do you have an idea? Uh, I'd have to go back and look. Okay. I have a log for each month how many truck loads go in there, not really trucks. I guess I could do Do we that. have an ordinance on the maximum amount? No. No. We don't. Okay. It doesn't matter. It's a hours of operation. Well, it's hours of operation. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yes. One, one more thing was somebody made a comment about that being valuable property. That's zoned residential. That's, a, that's residential. It's outside of the Brown Road uh, biz uh, zone. So biz it's, zone? it's strictly residential property. Correct. It's not, it's not commercial. Right. On the. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. And we have no plans to do anything other than, you know, it's four lots right now, and that's probably all it's ever going to be. Okay. Well, I think all we can do is follow whatever our legal advice is as far as what the ordinance states and what the request is and the lots affected. And I'm not going to go beyond that because I have not been given any legal opinion to change it. So, um, do we have mm -hmm. any further discussion or motion? Anybody? I'll, I'll probably regret this, but um, <laughs> having having heard the residents' concerns, um, I I resent the fact that we don't care because we do. Um, as other board members have stated. Our ability to do what the residents want is limited by law. Um, I know, I, first of all, I don't pretend to know what any of you go through living on that road. I don't live on that road. I live not far away, but upwind. So I can't, I wouldn't begin to know what you go through there, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to minimize it at all. But as I believe it was Mr. Walker um, mentioned, in the years that I've been going to that pit site, this is the very closest it's been. I walked back to what used to be a bomb crater to the depth of two of these rooms and said, where did the hole go? And they said, it's been filled in. So they are working on it. The end is coming. Now, I don't work for the township, but I do have some background in ordinance work in another area in the county. And questions like, well, what if, who, who keeps track of the trucks? Or what if somebody's there 10 minutes after 7? Whoever the ordinance person is, when they respond out there, they have to have, or, or they have to have evidence that they have seen, that they can document, and that they can prosecute to get anything done. I go out and slap a ticket on somebody based, and I'm sure all fine individuals, I, I'm not impugning anybody's character, but take any one of you based on uh, your, or your evidence. I go to court and the judge says, where's your evidence? And I said, well, they said so. Thanks for coming, go on home. And that's how that works. So we have to be reasonable, um, near the cutoff time, be it five or be it seven. And I will say, since i am got my mouth open, I would be more in favor of five by far than seven when t the vote time comes. We've outlined dust control measures. There are remedies that you folks can get within limits, but what I would want more than anything in the world if I were the whole bunch of you is for them to get done and leave and never come back again. And that is what they're doing. They're not making money off this. They're not other than having a place to dump their dirt. They're filling that hole in, and when they close that gate and lock it for the final time, you win, and that's where they're headed. I'm done, thank you. Okay, thanks, Dan. Okay, any further discussion by the board? Anybody want to attempt? <laughs> Somebody's got to make one. I can't. <clears throat> I'll make the motion. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, make sure. Make sure I get all the stuff in there, guys. Yeah. If, if I skip something, remind me. In the matter of ZBA case AB. Notes over here on my paperwork. Nine nine dash O two dash two O one nine Dance Excavating Inc. Two nine eight five Judah Road, the north five hundred thirty five feet of lot eleven of Mount Judah Farms, parcel number zero nine dash three two. Dash 400 dash 056, lot 11, except the north 535 feet of Mount Judah Farms, parcel number 09 dash 32, dash 400 dash 057, lot 12, and the southerly 588 feet of lots 13 and 14 of Mount Judah Farms, parcel number 09 dash 32 dash 400 dash 055 and 3011 Judah Road lots 13 and 14, excluding the southerly 588 feet of Mount Judah Farms, parcel number 09-32-400-063, 
The petitioners are questioning renewal of an Ordinance 99 permit for sand and gravel mining, earth excavation, and or filling and earth balancing. Be granted because this is a renewal of a, of a pit, of a uh, permit to finally get this pit completed, which has been an aggravation for the residents for the past 60 years. And also to meet the, uh, the final permits when they're going to get the slopes correct, as the engineer uh, did in their report, with the following conditions. Days of operations, Monday through Saturday, no holidays or Sunday. Hours of operations, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The uh, number of vehicles they're requesting is 100 vehicles per day. And that will be controlled by the new uh, Howell route uh, from the Oakland County Road Commission. That's going to be have to be updated. And I want to go into the engineer's comments. For the record, I want to read those in here. I had them here a little while ago. I lost them. Mm -hmm. So be patient with me, please. The conclusion. By Warren. <laughs> Thank you. I want to read these in the record. Our OHM engineer, in our opinion, application of supplemental materials as submitted appear to be in uh, substantial compliance with Township Ordinance Number 99 and the Township's engineer standards. We recommend the following items be conditions of the approval. Install a safety fence in the northeast section of the site until 2019 restoration work is completed as noted on the survey. Number two, the applicant shall furnish to the Township a copy of the haul route permit renewal with the Road Commission for Oakland County for Judah Road. The current permit is set to expire on 6-1-2019. The approximate start date and end of, uh, date of any increased activity, if applicable, occurring on the site for the year should be included in the application and or notice given to the township prior to high periods of activity. Number four, per section seven, item L of Ordinance 99, the applicant shall note that tracking of material and dust control issues will be monitored and improvements may be required throughout the permit year. And number five, per section 10 of Ordinance 99, a log of each fill material load shall be maintained by the applicant to document as fill as suitable fill material as defined. In addition, the log will include one photograph of each truck load which shall depict the contents of the fill material and the date and time of the delivery. If requested by the building official, copies of all logs and photographs shall be submitted to the Township Building Department on a monthly basis or earlier. Also, we want to make sure that the bond is kept up to date and also the insurance is up to date. I'll, um, Those are my motion. Okay, thank you. I'll second that motion if you'll include that the building department is going to make a request uh, to uh, the Waymaster to see if they can change the haul route to Baldwin Road, if that's possible. I amend my motion to reflect your addition. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes. Could we consider one more addition? Uh, Mr. Baker did state that they may occasionally store work trucks from the Baldwin project on the site overnight. Okay. I'll amend my I'll amend the support that. on that, or motion on that, too. Thank you. Okay. For discussion by the board? Please call the roll. Blood? Yes. Durham? Yes. Yes. Walker? Yes. Yarrow? Yes. Good luck, sir. Okay, next we have uh, AB 9904-219, Pontiac Crushed Cement, Lot 30, excluding the South Warner Feet of Highland Farms, parcel 0932-400-021, Lot 29, excluding the South 400 Feet of Highland Farms, parcel... Um, Either you're going to get louder, Chairman. Yeah, <laughs> Chairman, or you got to wait a minute. I guess I'll have to wait, <laughs> sir. Please talk out in the hallway. Could you talk out in the hallway so we can continue the meeting? Thank you. Okay, uh, excluding the South Warner feet of Highland Farms, parcel 0932400021, lot 29, excluding the South Warner feet of Highland Farms, parcel 0932400022, and a 7.5 acre parcel. 0932400058. Petitioner is request renewal of an ordinance 99 permit for sand and gravel mining earth excavation and uh, earth balancing to run basically a crushing plant. Please state your name, sir. Pete Granzo, Pioneer Crush Cement. Yeah, Pete. So 
Uh, let's see, we're going to go through with our engineers first, Pete, and then we'll see what we're doing here. If you would, Mark. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Again, I'll just summarize um, our, our findings and, and go over the, the uh, conditions of our, of our uh, approval recommendation. Um, similar to the uh, um, Bob Warren trucking um, submittal, this site has a uh, topo survey on file. Uh, and is also subject to a site plan under review by the township. Um, several stockpiles of material uh, to be crushed were located along the west north sides of the site. The site generally appeared to be well maintained and cleared debris. Uh, at the time of our visit, uh, the old crushing unit um, was being dismantled and uh, for removal from the site. Uh, it was our understanding from discussions that a smaller and more portable unit is uh, looking to be purchased by the applicant uh, later this year. Um, we talked about the drainage pond that's common to the two parcels uh, before and remind the applicant that uh, any pumping of uh, stormwater to Brown Road does require a uh, permit from the Road Commission. If the uh, erosion is, is due to uh, washout from the uh, access road, we uh, ask that the applicant uh, address that uh, as well. Um, in conclusion, it was our opinion that the current application estimated is in substantial compliance with Ordinance 99. We ask that the following items be addressed. If you'd like me to read those conditions into the... Sure, absolutely. Okay. Uh, number one, a permit from the Road Commission should be obtained to discharge drainage from the retention pond to Brown Road. Number two, proper soil erosion measures shall be installed to prevent erosion and sediment from leaving the site. Number three, the water level in the pond should be monitored throughout the year. Clean out of accumulated sediment will be needed to promote infiltration. Number four, the application should be should include an estimated volume of concrete to be hauled uh, in with applicable dates. Uh, number five, per section six of Ordinance 99, the applicant shall address the bond and guarantee and issuance informa insurance information with the township if not done so already. Number six, per section seven, item L, the applicant shall note that tracking of material and dust control issues will be monitored and improvements may be required throughout the permit year. And lastly, number seven, per, or, uh, per section 10 of Ordinance 99, a log of each fill material uh, load shall be maintained by the applicant to document all fill is suitable fill material as defined. In addition, the log will include one photograph of each truck load, which shall depict the contents of the fill material and the date and time of the delivery. If requested by the building official, copies of all logs and photographs shall be submitted to the Township Building Department on a monthly basis or earlier. Uh, no variances uh, were requested. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, generally, you're not doing any fill. You're right. bringing nope. in Crush concrete, crushing it, cycling it, taking it out, out in yeah. suitable sizes. Uh, do you have an estimate on the, uh, when's your new uh, crusher coming in? Oh, uh, it's at it's at our gravel pit right now. So, Is it? Yeah. Do you have an estimate of uh, how much volume? Uh, it'll be like the last couple of years, I'm sure, about sixty, seventy thousand. Sixty, seventy thousand. Yeah. How's your uh, stockpile there right now? Concrete. Very small. Very small. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Question by the board. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm sure it's in your information, but hours of operation. Uh, seven to five. Seven to five. Okay. That's Monday through Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Um, trucks per day. Uh, fifty. I'm sure that's an overstretch, except for a very few rare days. I mean, I've always, since I've been coming over there, I've always been impressed with that operation. It is always clean, neat, and I've never seen anything that just jumped out at me in all the years I've been going there. We try. You guys, to be to be commended. Thank you. Mike, do you think? Well, same as uh, Mr. Durham said. Yeah, you're doing well first on that. Lucy? No? Don? Nothing. Okay. Anybody here speak to this man? Okay. Um, nothing? 
won't talk about from the last one. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, hold on a second here. Give me a minute. Um, Your motion should include the conclusion. Lucy. In the matter of ZBA case number A, <clears throat> AB 9904 2019, um, Pontiac Cross Cement. Lot number 30, excluding the south 400 feet of Highland, Highland Farms. Parcel number 0932-400-021. Lot number 29, excluding the south 400 feet of Highland Farms. Parcel number 0932-400-022. And a 7.5 acre parcel. Parcel number 0932-400-058. I would move that the petitioner's request for the renewal of ordinance number 99, permit for sand, gravel, and mining, earth excavation, and or earth fill and balancing be granted because, um, do I have to read over what, um, what No, I can I just go with the conclusions already read into the record. With the conclusions already read into the record by Mark, our township engineer, and that the, um, hold on a second. Okay. It's way past my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with the following conditions, please include, okay. Days of operation are Monday through Saturday, seven to five, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, number of vehicles per day? 50. 50. Okay, 50. Um, dust control will be taken care of. Engineer comments be read into the that were read into the record already. That your bond um, guarantee and insurance information is up to date. Right. I'll support the motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Please call roll. Yes. Fled. Yes. Walker. Yes. Aaron. Yes. Aaron. Yes. Thank you. Okay, good seeing you. Next, we have public comment. Eugene McNam, 2981, Judah. I got two statements made by the board that I'd like corrected. One is Mike Flood. Mike Flood said that Bob Horn dug the hole. No, Bob Horn did not dig that hole. That was dug by Dan's excavating. When Bob got out of mining, the last part of his work, he was doing topsoil. He had that whole area all flattened out, and he was doing topsoil. That's the last type of work that Bob Warren was doing in that pit. Dan's excavating is the one that dug the hole. Oh, and he you. started that under Mark. The second thing that Dan said, he said that Dan was doing the township a favor by filling it in. He's already over 1060. I have a map, map here, that Dan's turned in that said the limits of fill was 1060 in the pit. Court order says 1060. Now he's already over 1060. And you let him bring more in. I just can't understand it. Now I'll tell you where some of this mess started. I've told you before and I'll tell you again. In 08, this board, and, I, and the one thing I hate to say, Yaros wasn't here. I can't, can't get on to him. But Gibbs, Matthew Gibbs was on the board that night. He, he was part of the board from the main board. And he took over the meeting. And he's the one that took my property off the permit. Otherwise, my property would still be operating on that pit. My property is still on that Ordinance 99 pit permit. He won't say it right now, but Dan knows it is, and, and the 
And, and the engineer for the township knows it is because they put out a map in 012. I got the map showing that OHM drew the map that you seconded. So I'm still on the map, and nobody, when you do the pit, you never walk it. Well, anyway, Matthew Gibbs told the board <coughs> that he was an engineer, that he was a lawyer, so he could give this board legal opinion of how to change it. He can't. There's the only man that can. If there's 10 judges sitting here, there's the only man that can give this township legal opinion. He's the only one. And, Marcy, and Matthew Gibbs changed the whole pattern and that took my property off the permit. And this zoning board cannot take my property off the permit. You have no authority. You got zoning and ordinances. That's all you can work on. And you took it off. And now today you're still operating under an illegal platform. And the Court of Appeals knows my properties on that permit. Township Main Board knows it's on there. Gentleman over here knows it's on there. And yet you still are operating on just Dan's property. And you should be operating under the permit that was issued in 99 or 89. And you're not doing it. And that night, two of the board members got me out in the parking lot and told me that they know it was illegal, but that's what the township wanted that to go through, period. Because they was working on 24 and they needed Dan to have a place to dump his material. And that's how it got through. And one of the board members that night, not one of the two I'm talking about, another one, when they, Gibbs wanted to change it to his way of thinking, one board member voted no. But then when it, the vote came in, he voted <coughs> the way Gibbs said to vote. And that's what's happened, and that's where it's at. And someday, this is going to get cleared up. And just got to remember, my property's on there. It's supposed to be 1060 when it's done. And he's still filling. And he's past 1060. I hope if this... Ha and, and I'll tell you another thing. And he can tell... Dan can tell you the township has... Full authority to, to run that pit and tell what properties to be taken off after it's completed and what is not, and where to pile the dirt and where not. The township has that authority. But the township also says it has to be, the court says it has to be 1060, and I have recall rights if it's not taken care of. So you people have a lot to think about. McNabb, Warren Township. Had a fun meeting, didn't you? Uh, a few things that didn't even get addressed was the water running on my father's property. I don't know. I guess I'll have to have a meeting with the building department and see where that goes. I don't know why that wasn't addressed. And there's just so many things that it's, and you guys sat through just as much of it. And every complaint that everybody's ever complained about, I've heard people on this board complain about five or six garbage trucks in your area. This is a safety issue. You know, I'm not going to get on the soapbox again, but just put yourself in our shoes. You say you all care. I know you're limited on what you can do, but we've been providing you with pictures for years, whether it be pictures of a truck at a gate at on a, east, on a holiday that was closed, never gets recoursed. 
you're right. You probably only get so many complaints because nobody calls. Everybody's tired of calling. Well, I guess maybe we should be the wolf and call all the time. I don't know. But if they call, nothing ever happens. Every year you give a permit with restrictions, whether it be years ago we were complaining about the fence down. Yeah, the fence down. The fence never got fixed. Two weeks before the permit was renewed, they'd be up there fixing the fence. So the fence was fixed when you'd walk through. There just seems to be no penalty for the actions. And that's what all we're asking for is hold them to the same standards you hold everybody else. And you would want somebody to hold your next door neighbor to, whether he's building the deck too close. They're all inches in numbers. There's all kinds of numbers. This is going to back the court. There's not a doubt. And that's not your job to go to court or not. You don't make decisions on lawyer. But Dan knows what's going on. And maybe he should have the fortitude to say, you know, that's wrong. This is what's been going on. We need to correct it. Now all of a sudden we're going to get some pictures. What changed? Something changed. But what about since 15, when that new ordinance come out? I was the first one in his office arguing about it. I talked to the guy before him, and I talked to him. There's no recourse I don't blame him for not taking pictures. I wouldn't want to take pictures either. But there's no recourse. The damage is done. What do you do? You just, oh, no, I don't live by it. I don't care. It's no big deal. It's all good, Phil. We trust him. Al goes out there three times a week, and he looks at dirt and takes pictures. They could dump 100 trucks a day on Tuesday. He don't get out there till Thursday. Where's that dirt at? He can't see it. I'm not saying they're doing anything. But the possibility is there. That's why the ordinance was changed, and the ordinance was never followed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have communications. Um, I don't think we have any other than uh, dates can be postponed, but we've already used that. Okay, committee reports. I don't think we have anything active at this time. Members' comments? No oh, comment. Comment? Comment? Okay. No. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Support? I'll support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same.